Let's see what we got. Whoa. Man, what shoe is this? This is our Jordan. It is. A Jordan 13? Is it a Jordan 13 low? Oh! Yeah. He got oh, it! Oh, yes, sir! It's the show that brings you drip from around the NBA. Tune into the Sneak Fest show presented by Ten Toes Memphis, where we talk sneaker culture, fashion, shoe trends, and lots more. Join me, Kelsey Wright Johnson, Sherman, Jerry, and Adam every Tuesday live at 10 a.m. on Grind City Media. Rob, let's hear some, yeah. can we get some nugs? Points scored during the NFL playoffs. Memphis, number two on the list. Ah. That's because Jake Elliott and Riley Patterson. Rosa, you don't have to rain on the parade. That's because, yeah. Yeah, no kidding, Roser. No pooping on nuggets. Put that as the title of the show this week. Get your sports betting picks and trends with Rob Fisher, Lang Whitaker, CJ Hurt, and John Roser. The Odds Couple. Now live every Thursday at 10 a.m. on Grind City Media and YouTube. This girl shared a text message that her dad sent their family group text. He said, I can't keep up with the pressure of always having to LOL or like or heart everyone's random thoughts, picks, and amusements. I never do it. You just don't answer? I, no. And I just want everyone to know on any group chat I've ever been a part of, I see you. I like your posts. I just forget to do it sometimes. Tune in to Rise and Grind with Jessica Benson. Live daily at 8 a.m. on GrindCityMedia.com. It is time to talk about who you want to see in the dunk contest. Because that's really the competition that matters the most. Ja's not on my list. Ja is on my list. Yeah. I he mean, won't do it. No. He's talked about what would what it would take for him to do it. He's like, three mil. Like, he's not going to do it. I think if he was in it, he would win. But I, I also feel like there's nothing for him to win anymore. Like, he's already won. The- he knows. Join Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Ray Johnson, every Thursday as we debate the hottest topics in the NBA. I am H.O. on GrindCityMedia.com, YouTube, and our social channels. HBCU Huddle with me, CJ Hurt, and Mike Wallace has all of your HBCU football, sports, and culture needs covered. We discuss the hottest stories weekly across the black college sports landscape, including the SWAC, MEAC, Tennessee State, Lane, Lamorne Owen, and all the black colleges in between. New episodes drop every Thursday, and you can stay connected with the latest stories and discussions about your favorite HBCU by going to grindcitymedia.com, selecting the podcast folder, and clicking on the HBCU Huddle tab. HBCU Huddle is a spot for all your black college sports and culture needs. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. That's why we're looking for team members to reinvent the steel industry, much like the Grizzlies are reinventing basketball. Our edge starts with you at www.bigriversteel.com. That's www.bigriversteel.com. Hungry as a bear? Grizzlies fans can score big by ordering their favorite combos. If you pick up the Burrito Supreme combo from your local Taco Bell through February 21st, you'll score a key tag good for a free Nacho Cheese Doritos Locos Taco on future visits. What's better than a Grizzlies win? Free tacos at Taco Bell. Stop by today to get yours. Available participating Memphis area Taco Bell locations while supplies last. Free item valid per disclaimer on back of key tag. Nacho fries are back at Taco Bell. You know, the fries covered in bold Mexican spices you dip in a warm nacho cheese sauce. You can also dunk them into nacho cheese sauce or pour the sauce onto a pile of them and create like a nacho fries nachos. The thing is that you eat them with nacho cheese sauce. That's what makes them nacho fries. Otherwise, you're just eating fries and sipping on nacho cheese sauce, and that's the wrong way. Sorry, just really passionate about nacho fries. Nacho fries are back, only at Taco Bell. At participating U.S. Taco Bell locations for a limited time only while supplies last. Contact local store for hours and participation, which vary. Represent Every Day, presented by Delta Dental of Tennessee, is an incentive-based program focused on keeping youth K-6 through grade engaged in school in order to combat truancy. In partnership with Shelby County Schools and with the help of Delta Dental of Tennessee, the Grizzlies are focused on reducing chronic absenteeism among the most impacted schools in the Mid-South. Students in the program have the opportunity to win fun and unique prizes by going to school every day and being engaged in the classroom. For more information on the program, visit Grizzly com slash community slash education today. At Mountain Dew, we'd like to remind you that the world as we know it would not exist without the number zero, which is why at Mountain Dew, we'd like to recognize the number zero for making Mountain Dew Zero Sugar possible. Even with no sugar, it packs all of the bold citrus kick Dew Nation knows and loves. It's so good, you have no reason not to try it, as in zero. Get it? Get it? 
crack open an ice cold Mountain Dew Zero Sugar. It's Zero Sugar, all do. Live from FedEx Forum, this is the Chris Vernon Show on GrindCityMedia.com and the Grind City Media YouTube page, presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Now, here's your host. GrindCityMedia.com. It's Chris Farnan. Show. Welcome, 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 welcome. It was a whirlwind day yesterday with the NBA trade deadline taking place. Well, that all got settled this morning. I went over and listened to Zach Kleiman, the general manager of the Grizzlies, speak about the events of yesterday. We will get to that. Gary Parrish is going to join us in studio. John Krasinski, our buddy from Minnesota, who is now... Covering Mike Conley is going to join us in studio. Find out what he thinks about what they did yesterday, moving off D'Angelo Russell and now going forward with Mike Conley. Brian Edwards from VegasInsider.com will be here to talk all things Super Bowl as that is going on this weekend. Also, it's a Friday. The sun is out. Smile. Let's do it. Turn it up. Hope everybody's having a good day. All right. We got a lot of stuff to get to on the show today. Before I get to it, let me welcome John Roser to the show. John Roser, a.k.a. the Cologne Ranger, the Body Spray Bandit, Senor Sack, Johnny Backbow, Johnny Bearcat, a.k.a. the Grim Roser, John Asparagus, John Purdy. What up? What up, what up, what up? Devin Walker's here. He's the microphone mangler. Senor Quasadilla. Mr. Man. Navo. The reporter. All I got to say, bro, I got my first, uh, my first look at Luke Kennard last night on NBA 2K. I put him on the Grizzlies. Feeling real good right now. <laughs> he Feeling real good it. right now. Green. He's green. I did, I did my small ball lineup. Ja, Dez, Kennard. Dylan, Jaren, spray bottle. I kicked somebody's ass on lawn last night with the new Grizzlies. Make them quit? Did they quit? They did quit. Quit in third quarter. <laughs> Gary Parrish is Let's here go. in studio. Gary Parrish show, of course, begins in April. Until then, he just gets to go on vacation and show up every yeah, once in a while. Yeah, what are you guys hey. doing later on today? <laughs> I got nothing to do. Last week, we missed you. Um, where were you? In was, San Diego? I was in San Diego. For what? My wife um, had a best friend. When I met her, she had a best friend named Jennifer. And, uh, you know, we went to their wedding and the whole deal. Her, um, her, her husband is, a, I think I can say, a Navy SEAL. And so they live uh-huh. in Sa- the San Diego area. I'll keep it vague. And she was having a surprise uh, birthday party. And her husband, because he's a Navy SEAL, he's, there, there is no social media presence for their family. So it's not like you can... I don't know what Jennifer's been up to, you know, like I, they're just off social media completely because of his career. Yeah. So he reached out to Kelly and he was like, hey, I know it's a big ask, but if you guys could come out, I'm throwing a surprise birthday party for Jen. She'd love to see you. And uh, then Kelly brought it to me and I was like, is it important to you? And she said, yeah, I think I think it is. And I said, then let's go. So I flew from New York and uh, she flew from Memphis. We met in Detroit and then went to San Diego. So I had a weekend in San Diego. Who better? To plan a sneak attack than a Navy SEAL. <laughs> <Yeah, exactly. laughs> hey. This is who you want to get exactly. on your side if you want a sneak attack. That being said, the only thing I see about San Diego is Bill Walton complaining about it all the time. <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with San Diego? No. Oh. What does he say about they, it? Like their, their parks have been overtaken by like campsites. 
The homeless problem is yeah, we just ran into gotten, a little, we went for a walk on the homeless problem has gotten insane everywhere, everywhere throughout California. Yeah, like uh, they, they have a massive park in San Diego uh, called Balboa Park. Mm -hmm. I think it's bigger than Central Park, wow. um, but it's the same sort of thing. Like in the city, big park. It's where the San Diego Zoo is, and we went just went for a walk. I don't we don't want to go to the zoo, although the zoo is amazing by all accounts. But uh, we just went through a, for a walk through the park, and you saw a little bit of that. I love it. Yeah. 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 That's crazy. I'm trying to get one of these jackets, though. I saw GP walk in. I've never seen a human being on Earth <laughs> with a CBS jacket. Oh, I got he's a bunch got of, a bunch of CBS. Got a bunch of he's always <laughs> rocking CBS stuff. <laughs> if, if you need one, I get you one. Yeah, you, you, you just make a Grizzlies jacket. trade. You got a bunch of that old Grizzly yeah. stuff. Yeah. The, one, the one that I actually, I actually think is funny that I own it. Is the CBS Sports the Blazer? Blazer, oh, that's, <laughs> that's amazing. Like Jim Nance, yeah. Yeah. Like, yes. like, like you don't because you don't just get them if you're like a studio analyst or a host. Vern Lundquist. You got to be on in a game. So like as a sideline reporter, I remember when I get my first CBS <laughs> Blazer, <laughs> and I would just I would just put it on and I'd feel like Jim Nance. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was like I feel like Jim Nance. I feel real important. Yeah, and uh, so I, now I've got a but. But you want one of those? I can get you one of those. <laughs> 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 hey, so we went down. Roser and I. Went Went down to go watch. Uh, well, Desmond Bain spoke, and then uh, Tyus, Tyus Jones yeah. spoke. And yesterday, we we tried to line it up to figure out Tyus Jones had graduated because he's only there for one year at Duke after they had won the title with the Okafor Winslow team, and then Kennard came in after. And Kennard was there for two years and was there the first year with uh, Brandon Ingram and the second year with uh, Jason Tatum. So, I mean, pretty good in terms of who yeah. you play alongside. And Grayson Allen was there the whole time, too, obviously. Um, but he's a fellow Duke guy. I guess there were the pictures surfaced around, yep, right around my phone. I got of right Tyus here. and Kennard, right? And right. Tyus said they've been buddies since high school. They, they go back to high school. And yeah. what you find, I think, and I know you are all, you were always at that Peach Jam for so many years. All these guys know each other. They're all friends by the time they're 15. They That's all right. know each other all over the country. Like when we were their age, when we were 15, you couldn't have friends in other parts of the country. <laughs> that didn't make any sense. No. You have to call them long distance and you have a $400 phone bill. But these days, like your best friend can literally live anywhere and you can keep in touch with them. More or less as much as you keep in touch with your best friends who live down the road. Yeah. And so, yeah, all these guys, they grow up playing against each other. Like, I bet you if you took two similar-aged Grizzlies who were also heralded prospects coming up. All know each other. They are, they've known each other since they were 12 years yeah. old. And it's yeah. crazy because a lot of them hold, like, the same opinion of the guy that they've always had. Right. And I know this because every time, if you were to go ask anybody that's of that age, Go ask around what they think of Cam Reddish, and they think they oh, yeah. think Cam Reddish is amazing. <laughs> no, I'm a, Cam Reddish is on his like fourth team already, <laughs> yeah. and they all still think Cam okay. Reddish. I remember him from Peace Jam back in 2000. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm convinced that Cam Reddish, Rudy's like this, Jeff, Jeff Green. Green was like this. I'm convinced that this is what it is because the summer circuit and and that AAU ball is very similar to when they all just get together and play pickup in the summers. And that those guys in the non-structure are unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you go play with Cam Reddish in the summer, and you will walk away thinking, this dude's ready to blow up. <laughs> right. And he's not ready to blow up because they play – they get played. It's unorganized Bob, basketball. Well, how about this? Yeah. So Bob, yeah. Bob, I was talking to Bob Huggins about this one time. Um, he had Joe Alexander. Remember Joe yes. Alexander? It's like a lottery pick the whole, and then was a total bust in the NBA. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so what, what? I was talking to Huggins. I was like, so what happened there? He said, I'm, you know, if you put him in a workout, run him through drills, you'll think he's a lottery pick. You put nine other guys on the court with him, he ain't the same guy anymore. Yeah, and that's, that, happens. Yeah. That, that happens. That happens a lot. a lot. To your point about these guys all knowing each other, I feel like I'm name dropping nonstop. This is like a real story. When, before Kevin Durant was, was, uh, played his freshman season at Texas, I went to Austin, spent a couple days with him, and we went to lunch one day, and we were just sort of talking like normal people. And he was like, so where are you from again? And I was like, Memphis. And he goes, oh, man, you know Randy Culpepper? <laughs> <laughs> he is a legend. Yeah. And I said, yeah. I said, yeah, I know Randy yeah. Culpepper. And he was like, Randy Culpepper's cold, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, like, yeah. I was like, you have no idea. Like, you tell people you're from Memphis, and they go, Elvis or Bill Street? You were the first person who's ever <laughs> name association with Memphis was Randy Culpepper. That is so good. <laughs> I, I, I Central, was he Central High School? 
Uh, uh, he played in the conference. He played in Utah. 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 So I think where do you, who was he? High Sheffield. Sheffield. Yeah, with the Sheffield. I yeah, re- there was a uh, there was a podcast. I can't remember. Maybe a couple years ago, Kyrie was talking about Joe Jackson in high school. Yeah, and he's yeah. like, but Joe Jackson was so cold. Yeah. Yeah. Like he gave all of us buckets. <laughs> yeah. All of us. So funny. Yeah, so we went down and listened to Kleiman talking today after uh, Desmond and Tyus. And I don't know what you took away, Roser. Like, this is what I took away. Obviously, Kleiman's always very confident. He's very good today, actually. Um, not actually. I don't want to say like, he's not new. <laughs> he, was su- he was surprisingly good. <laughs> yeah, he only talks a couple <laughs> times a year, and he's always good when he does it. Um, you know, very confident of the team. He's also I, – he's, I like when he is very self-aware about kind of what the, what the concerns are, right? So, like, when somebody brings up, hey, you guys lauded the better presence of Danny Green – well, now Danny Green's gone, and you got younger again, and you're still very young. And so are you worried at all about not having that veteran presence around, et cetera, et cetera? And, you know, he doesn't sit there and go, no, it's not an issue at all. What he continues to say is, A, and he's very good at doing it because he, he can change the subject on you, which is what all great speakers can do. Right. <laughs> a, yeah, we're the third youngest team in the league, and basically no one wins like us. So I like that these guys are brash. I like that they believe they can beat everybody, and I back them 100%. Yeah. And he goes, are there going to be challenges? Inevitably, there are going to be challenges. And I've said from the very beginning, this is not going to be linear. Our growth is not going to be linear. So you do this one year, yeah. then this, then this, yeah. then this, then this, like, you're there. It yeah. is what it is. And, and then that was like towards like after you got into like the real question and answers. But what mattered to everybody was yesterday in the trade deadline. And without being abundantly clear, he was abundantly clear that they made what they felt were extremely aggressive offers. Yeah. And because he even stopped himself and he said, offers that you would have said, wow, they're really going for, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Zach Lowe reported on some of this this morning. Yeah. Right. Where he's, I believe the report was Grizzlies offered three firsts for OG. Right. Yeah. And they offered every pick they have for Kevin Durant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, hey, I would have liked to reunited KD with Randy Culpepper. Yeah, yeah right. Too. That would have been <laughs> nice. Hey. Um, I, think, uh, I think Cam Johnson's name is out there. Like, Johnson and Bridges. So if they are the one that offered the four first round pick, it would, honestly, it would not surprise me. Because here's the thing: when you hear them like throwing around the first round picks, think about the way that they have acquired a lot of these guys. Are they're not picks that they had? They've traded into picks a lot. They've traded into picks to get them right. So like they traded into the Zaire one. They had to trade with Boston to get the Bane one. Like, these are ones that are, like, big ones that we remember. The BC one right? was a trade, right? The BC, BC one was, was a trade. to Oklahoma City. Yeah. LaRavia was a trade. Roddy was a trade. Yeah, so, I mean, when you can trade into – and they have shown an ability to trade into the first round, it makes it a little less worrisome that you are – possibly moving them because it used to always be that right especially in a small market like that's your that's your thing so it, it is fascinating to think about how aggressive they were with those picks because small market teams are not typically aggressive with those picks but they tried to float them around and what, they just couldn't get a return on what, it what would you say to a fan who says okay three first round picks sounds like a lot mm-hmm. but it clearly wasn't enough it wasn't enough could you have done more i would say that that to me is already way more than enough. Yeah. For the players that you're talking about, right? I would say that if it's like OG and Anobi, right. for instance, right? So, somewhere along the way, OG and Anobi got talked about so much that it became like, he's like, like all star OG and Anobi. Yeah. Now listen, he is, I, I, I don't want to have mean? revisionist history. I wish you were here today. I do too. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. do too. But that being said, I. I also don't think he I, honestly like he's not three first round picks. No, he's not three first round picks. Well, like Mark Gian, Mark Giannato at the Commercial Pill tweeted a possible trade package yesterday or the day before. It involved three first round picks and maybe Zaire. I don't know, but yeah, like yeah. A, a young player and three picks. And you go to the replies in that for whatever it's worth. And the Grizzlies fans were mostly like, "That's way too much." 
Yeah. That, that's it what Grizzlies fans were yesterday. You know what? You've got to you base it on what, uh, what the going rate is for everybody else. Right. You don't trade three first-round picks for role players. Unless they are role players that you think are going to be part of a core four, that you turn a core three into a core four, and yeah. that's what you've got for the next six years. I mean, because, God forbid, OG Ananobi is not the answer, or he doesn't like his role in Toronto, where he's basically the fourth guy. Right? Yeah. So what if he doesn't like it? Right. And then after a year, now you got, you've given up three first-round picks for – we really only got, what, 25 games left? Something yeah, like that in this season? Floor, yeah. And we then you got, got – yeah, right? I mean, I don't – and I think that – I think what you could do is you could fast forward to the off season, and you could go, all right, now we've still got our flexibility in this off season, and the rate is not going to be the rate once you get to the off season. And yeah, I, yeah. I thought that Masai basically – like how they just kind of played everybody and just basically – Because they ended up not moving any. No, uh, Masai right. said – All those guys stayed. The, all those guys. And Masai's comments were right. learned a lot about what the value of our guys uh, is, right. which is basically like I was just screwing around. I wanted to see what these guys are, and which means they're probably going to be available yeah. all this season. That's an off-season thing. I like the fact of like people want to come play here now, like play with y'all. Yeah. That's and true. People see that, the Grizzlies like, you know what? They're I a could lot, probably well, thrive. Well, in because there. what you do is you always call these agents, right? Yeah. And you say, "Hey, man, I'm about to make a big offer for your guy. Yeah, tell me he ain't gonna run out on oh, us." Right? Yeah, 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 those conversations are part of mm. the yeah. decision making process. Uh, all that said, I, I think it, it's pretty clear to most of us that you know they, they put big packages on the table for a Mikel Bridges, for an OG Ananobi, for a Kevin Durant. It didn't come together. Zach Lowe's reporting is that KD basically just wanted to go to Phoenix and they weren't going to trade him to Memphis because they were going to, and I don't know whether they should do him that favor, but that, that's where we were on that thing. All that said, oh, in uh, the end, it's show me the baby. Right. I mean, that's the way, well, that's the thing that's the way is that it works. At the end of the day, nobody cares. We, about can, that. we can all understand why a big deal wasn't done. Yes. We all understand it. We've just explained it. We have gone from a moment in time where the face of the franchise said, I'm fine in the West to now, That's right. you are less likely to get out of the West today than you were a week ago. That's undeniable. That's yeah. why, and I, this would be my opinion, I don't know, but just knowing the way that this, the, knowing the reporting, like when you're talking about Zach Lowe, and then there's been other guys that have reported on the Grizzlies and whatever, to me, that signals that, like, I think the Grizzlies would be much more um, willing to let that stuff be out there than ever before because you want, it didn't take place. Right. And so you want people to know, oh, yeah, right? Like, yo, don't, don't say that we just sat on our hands here. Yeah. Like, we offered three firsts for this dude. We offered every pick for that dude. We offered this and this and this for this dude while all the, all the while trying to keep everybody's name out of it. And he did. He was a little extra with the Dylan wasn't trade, uh, offered anywhere. Like, come yeah. on, bro. You don't have to go that. I get it. He's back on the team. but and, and I know he just got booed. But, like, you don't have to go so far. Like, come on. Yeah, but like I, I do think they want it. Their you, fans you, you, to know you're trading for wings, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, wanted, he wanted the fans to know. Uh, they want the fans to know. We put packages on the table for all these guys. You guys wanted. We yep. wanted them too. It just didn't. It just didn't. And let people see the packages well, about, so they can't say you didn't do enough. Well, yeah. Ray Roser may may do this. I, I don't know, but I used to have a producer who would just throughout the day nonstop send me emails about, hey, I tried to get this guy and I tried to get this person, <laughs> and, I tried to get this person. and at some point I was like, yo, I don't need to know what you're trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Just tell me when you have whoever you're gonna get. I don't need all the. Here's here's, right. here's what I've been up to today. Just show me the uh, uh, Trey uh, Wingo. Yeah. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> Starting on that. Tell me, tell me who I'm talking to at 420. I don't need to know anything else. Yeah. Uh, all that extra shit, bro. And 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 that's sort of where we are with this as well. It's yeah. like it's cool that you tried, but the sun's past you. They probably. Just, yeah. Probably. The Lakers got. I mean, what you need is somebody like the Suns. You need them to not mix and. Chris Paul get hurt. Yeah. No, play Denver or somebody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you, you need but them. like the whole. That's the other thing. It's like you sit, you watch all these shows, and we're doing it too. And you go, okay, now it looks like Phoenix is the favorite in the West. And they are, they are literally the favorite in the West. When the playoffs start. Is he making it through? That's the thing. Who is Kevin? You tell me. Okay, here, here's. I just listened Chris to a Paul, podcast. KD. Hey, I, I tell you this. I listened to a podcast because I went out of my way to check it out. It's the one that uh, 
It's the up in smoke with uh, Barnes smoke. and yeah, all all smoke. All smoke. Yeah. yeah, Barnes and uh, and and Stevie Jackson, and they do a they do a one episode a week with like Rachel Nichols. But anyway, she promoted it and said they're going to talk about Morant. And I was like, well, here's two guys I do want to hear talk about Dur- Morant, right? Yeah. They were going to talk about the situation with the Pacers and all that crap, right? So I went out of my way to listen to it. In the course of listening to that podcast, Jackson or Bar- one of them says, yeah, and this is, this is recorded way before the trade deadline. So yeah. this has nothing to do with them being Phoenix. But they were just talking about the Kyrie thing and about Kyrie uh, getting traded to Dallas. So that's what they're talking about. And then they're talking about Brooklyn and how it affects them. And one of them, I can't remember which one, said, you, and they, every once in a while they'll say something that they know that they've talked to people, and then maybe Rachel will catch them and be like, wait, what? And one of them said that the word is that his knee is way worse mm. than they're letting on. Durant? Yes. Which is not surprising at all. Yeah. So yeah. who knows? Again, who knows? But I'm telling you, that was before he got traded, like, I listened to a podcast where the guy said, I don't know when he's going to be back with the knee thing. And yeah, that, that, again, that, that, you never know. But that, that's the point I'm making. Like, on paper right now, I can have it's any, okay. the any Western Conference team healthy. I'm taking the Suns. Yeah. But, like, the playoffs literally every year come down to, in many ways, yes. just who's healthy and who's not. Yes. Well, and also, you, you, t- you give me Phoenix, Denver, Clippers, Grizzlies. Tell me which of those teams is going to be healthiest throughout the playoffs, and that's the one I'll take. Well, and it's also very – Spursy. We talked about wanting to be like them. Yeah. I mean, they never made in season deals, and it's this bet on like then there's no value to this. Okay? There's no value to this. Like there's where all the measurements, everything in the free world is measured. Like we literally on the pregame show can tell you how fast Brandon Clark ran last game. We posted, it's the FedEx we tracker. We posted every game. Yeah. 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 And it's like the FedEx tracker. Last game, Brandon Clark ran 2.6 miles at 4.2 miles per hour. <laughs> it's like, okay, we can track everything. What we cannot track and what and nobody can do is continuity. And they bet on it over and over again that our minutes logged together as a unit, that is the advantage. And it is an advantage for Denver, and it is an advantage for Memphis. And while the rest of these teams are going to have 20 games to figure it out, yeah. there's not an amount of minutes you're going to play. Yeah. Tell me the last right? time Chris Paul's played deep into the playoffs. Right. Well, like, I, like he, every time he's like. Well, they were like, in the finals two years ago. Well, I'm just Shut saying, up. Like, <laughs> before that. <laughs> Literally game seven before of that, the finals. Before that, before that, he's always been like hurt. Oh, he, no. It, hamstring. Throughout his ankle tenure, whether it was with the Clippers. Yeah. I mean, when Doc Rivers was trying to explain away his. Ridiculous playoff record last year for Philly. He did, and then Chris got hurt. And then Chris got hurt. <laughs> yeah, he's always got hurt, hurt. And then he got hurt in Houston. And then obviously he got banged up last year. Uh, but in, 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 injuries more than hypothetical healthy rosters dictate the playoffs. That's right. Every year. It's also hard to, but it is hard to throw it together and have it mesh sure. quickly. It just is. The Lakers are about to go through this. Because, yes, they are clearly more talented than they were. But they're in 13th right now. Yeah. And LeBron didn't even play, like, against that game against the Bucs. last night. On Thursday, right. yeah. On thir- last night against the Bucs. He was chilling, and it's like, bro. He just broke the score. No, right? he, wore, he wore himself out. Yeah. But, I mean, every game matters, right? And so now they're going to throw it together. And so these teams that did make the big changes, they've got to figure it out. I mean, I'm praying the Clippers bring in Westbrook. That would be amazing. Oh, my God. Yeah, that that's true. That would, be, bomb, everything. that would be unbelievable. <laughs> that would be absolutely <laughs> you know I mean? amazing. But, I mean, they've happened. all got to, you know, there is something to be said for playing a lot together I, I, and being in a million situations together and knowing each other and knowing where you are on the court. And the truth is this. When the Grizzlies have had their five guys as a unit together, they have been Unbelievable. I thought the other thing, and this speaks to to that too, that that Zach talked about was he he got it because he got the question about Zaire, um, but then he also just talked about it even with the other guys. Basically, he's like, like it, he's like, we're not trade like we not trading. Basically, we're not going to trade like Zaire Williams and Jake Laravia and David Roddy like. These guys are 21, 22 years old. Most guys, and he, he said, most guys in the NBA do not hit their prime until they're 26, 27, 28, 29. Like, we're not giving up on these guys 
after one season of putting stuff into them. Like, that's not how we operate here. A year ago, I would have told you that Santi Aldama can't play. Yeah. Right. Yep. Even a year ago, I did tell you yeah. that Santi Aldama Sa- could Sa- not Sa- play. Look, we did, a, we did a thing at Summer League. You guys will remember this. Remember when we recorded? Yeah. We recorded an episode, and we went to a Summer League game, and I came on the episode, and I said, I know they're, like, super high on Santi Aldama, and they're trying to run everything to him. I'm like, what does he do? Right. Like, what is he good at? And the next game, he had, like, 32, 12, 6, 5. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I guess the answer is he does everything. Right. Like, and, just and, and he everything. started for Jaron right. for 17 you, you, don't, you don't know how these no, guys no. are going to nah. develop. Like, you didn't expect. If you would have, based on what you saw their rookie season, you would have never thought that Santi would be this in his second year and Zaire would be doing what he's doing in his second year. Oh, you would fair. not have thought that. Trust the process. I would, I would have thought the reverse. Yeah. yeah. The development, I would have thought that Zaire is different was going to be a much bigger contributor. He started for Dylan for 50 yes. something games. Right. And that Santi was going will be having Roser calls games yeah. all year. <laughs> I got some NBA news for you. Two parts of it. Yeah. Uh, they picked the All-Star replacements for the All-Star game. Oh, did uh, Edwards get in? Yeah, Edwards yes. did get in. Lori yeah. So those are starters. Jot 12 started in the All-Star game. Lori Markin. No, yeah, that. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. So Embiid's filling in for uh Durant. And then who? Zion, oh, and, Zion, Curry. Zion, Zion is, and Curry. Okay. Oh, yeah. So then the replacement was Anthony Edwards, De'Aaron Fox, and Pascal Siakam. Wait, Edward. Oh, so Zion is replaced. That, that gave it two spots. Yeah. yeah. Four. Zion, Steph, Durant thrilled. out. Those three in. Ja moved into the starting line. Those guys line. totally yep. deserve to be in there, yeah. too. Yeah. And now let me tell you this. You could have given me. A million to one odds on Laurie Market and starting an All Star game. And I, I mean, <laughs> I'm like, where all? What, what All Star game? What All Star game? What All Star game? He's starting. Laurie Market is game? starting in the. Speaking of development, is not linear. Yeah, I thought he was a. Bum what the hell? He's been given up by two teams. Yeah. I mean, Chicago, yeah, and then Cleveland. You know, Cleveland, like, I mean, they had to move him in the Mitchell and, trade. Well, and this goes to show something, too, as Zach Kleiman said. It's like, you look at guys, they don't hit their prime until they're 26, 27, 28, 29. Dude, Laurie Markkinen is still 25 years old. Right. He was and the one and done guy. He does not turn 26 until May. Man. Sheesh. Starting the All-Star game. Back to back, to back for John. So, and John, John Morant's going to start it again, huh? Back to back, yep. I don't know I think, why I, you I, would I'm give up, though. I'm going to make a bet right now. You ready? Mm-hmm. He's going to try to win MVP. I'm being dead ass about it. Like he's gonna try to win. What did he, he didn't do anything last, last year? Last year he had two dunks with Trey Young, and that was it. Two, yeah, that's all he had. I think this year he's gonna try to win. Do you MVP. think he'll try to go for it? I think he'll try to go for it. He is one of those guys that like if he tries really hard, like yeah, every once in, those in a while. You see, remember when Westbrook like obviously was <laughs> yes. like giving it everything he had. <laughs> he, in won the back, he won back to back years. Westbrook yeah. did. Yeah. I think in the I mean, he was so like obviously that. trying and nobody else was. <laughs> yes. <laughs> No, the All-Star That's game, the hard part about it. It's like you've got to play, but you don't want to act like you're trying too hard. you got to try to. The way the way MVP is try too hard or just get hot making shots. Exactly. That's, that's what Curry did. Yeah. That's, that's, Curry that's did. how. Well, like Curry, you sort of expected to make shots, yes. although that was ridiculous. Yeah. But, like, yeah, the guy who gets hot yeah. or the guy who tries harder. Like, if you decide, well, just like the other night when LeBron decided he was breaking that record the other night, you can decide. Yeah. You can decide I'm going to score 30 in this All Star game if they keep me on the court long enough. I saw that. You clip. might be a jerk, but yeah. but yeah, you, you can do it. Yeah. I, I saw the clip. I don't know if you guys saw this of LeBron going over to his kids. Yeah. Uh, like in the third quarter, mm-hmm. and he's like, "How many I need?" And they're like 16. He's like, "All right, eight a quarter. I can do that. Yeah. Should I do it tonight?" <laughs> you well, know that's the mean? thing. If LeBron wanted to go get 40 oh, every sure. night, he yes. could go get 40 every night. So yes. he had made up his mind he was going to do that the that's other right. night. I think when he put on that headband, he made his mind up because he didn't wear a headband the whole year. He was like, "I'm gonna go back to Cleveland Bron headband." When he put that LeBron. black suit on, yeah, was when he made oh, up he his mind, been, hey, hey, the boy was clean. Outside of like, because we know Curry won it last year, as we're talking about. Like, do you know who won the year? Like the two years Giannis. before that, Giannis won in 2021. Do you know who won in 2020? Uh, we was it Chicago? Was that when we were there? 2020. I think that was Chicago. Was it Harden? No, no, no. no. 20, yes, right before the pandemic. Remember, I was yeah. sick. 
Yeah, if you were 20, free, 20, and you were freezing, Devin. Yeah, I was freezing 2020, Devin, I hate I, Chicago. Bro, I, I still. I it's it's cold. The only I pictures I have left on my phone from Chicago are like pictures of the Jordan statue and Devin sitting bundled up because it's the funniest thing ever. Got like, like ten layers hey, of clothing. Hey, it's cold in the United it Center. It ain't nothing around there. No, no. And, and and we were on Michigan Avenue, so you're right down there near Lake Michigan. Oh, it's like a t- wind tunnel. Oh, terrible. Yeah. When we I'm went to Navy Pier, that's where they did the frozen. All the activation they did. Lake Michigan. I like looked. I'm like, bro, Lake Michigan's frozen the whole thing. <laughs> and then there are like regular regular citizens running. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you all? You're hey, yeah, running outside. So wait, what is uh 2020? So that was the first year of the Elam ending. Yeah, that's Chicago. Who was it Dane? No. Who did it? Kawhi. I don't remember that at all. It was all. Kawhi. And then Charlotte, Kawhi. we were and then we were in Charlotte. Yeah. KD. Yeah. Durant won there. Yeah. All right. Jago, All right. Don't get that. Though. Gary, I got to ask you about college basketball before uh, you're out of here. Uh, anytime Memphis loses a game, especially yeah. if they lose a game to an opponent that people feel like they should not lose an opponent to, uh, uh, lose a game to, it's freak out time. Now we have had a little while to digest, you know, the fact that they did lose to Tulane. Since then, they were able to turn around and get a Good win. Oh, good on Tyler Harris, by the way, right. for setting yeah. the three-point record. That was super cool. Um, and so at least they got the Tulane thing out of people's system for a minute because they've won a game since. Um, but was the Tulane loss as critical mass as it feels within the city when you lose a game like that? Yeah, because it sent you either right on the edge of the bubble or on the wrong side of it. It, it you know, There was a time up until that Tulane game where – if you're Penny Hardaway or anybody else, you could say, hey, but we haven't lost anything outside of the first two quadrants. Mm-hmm. Well, now you can't say that anymore. That's a quadrant three loss to Tulane. So it was not good, um, and it was damaging, but it, it's not a death knell. The, the, but they have put themselves in a position like they do seemingly every year where you've got a string of games coming up against inferior opponents, Temple, UCF, and then Houston, but then after that, Wichita State, Cincinnati, SMU. You re- I don't want to say you can't lose them. But you'd be wise not to because you, you think you need to win every other game except for the two Houston's. I, 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 listen, reasonable people can disagree on this. I, I, I think Memphis can get into the NCAA tournament with five wins inside of the first two quadrants or or whatever. With with so if you beat Houston, I think, I think it makes up for the crack. It, it helps. It almost cancels it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I I don't think it's impossible for Memphis to get into the tournament without beating Houston. Like, I, I think that is on the table of things that could happen. But for that to happen, you can't lose any of these other ones. Um, if you take another one of these questionable losses, you're going to have to to get a win over Houston to, to make sure you feel comfortable on Selection Sunday. And you might, you know, find a point where you need multiple wins over Houston to feel comfortable. Like and Houston is the last game of the season, a home game. Well, the, pro- the problem is, like, like, they don't have much in Quadrant 1. They've got one Quadrant 1 victory. And so <laughs> – there's a lot of ways to get a quadrant one victory. Like we've talked about before, you could go play at, uh, at Bradley, and that would be a quadrant one victory. You could go play at Marshall, and that would be a quadrant one victory. You could go play at Sam Houston, and that would be a quadrant one victory. Wait, what? Wait, what? Play okay, if you, if you play these games on the road. So people get caught up in, like, how many quadrant ones do you have? Well, the only type of quadrant one Memphis can get now is the biggest. It's like it's one over a projected number one seed. Yeah. It's it's a win over the team that's ranked first at Ken Palm. And so you think they're the best team in the country? I think Alabama's the best team in the country. I think Purdue's got the best resume. I think Alabama's the best team. I don't know if you've seen this. Alabama's eleven and zero in the SEC, and they're winning these games against SEC teams by an average of twenty two points. Wow. Wait, wait, hold I mean, on. they're, they're, they're blowing out out. everybody. Hey, I'll tell you. I'll tell what you what happened in the Oklahoma game. I don't have no idea. It was just – well, I, I can tell you what happens to them. Memphis has a three-point loss to them. That's what I'm saying, 91-88. Well, Here's the thing with Alabama. Um, Nate Oates is probably more committed to a very specific modern style of play than any other coach in the country. I don't know if you've ever seen their practice yeah. court at Alabama. Yeah, they've got the four-point line. You're not even allowed to take mid-range shots. They're like they, – like when they're scrimmaging, oh. if you make a bucket mid-range, it's all painted. It's a zero. So, th- so they are – it's they like, have a four-point line, too, yeah, so that you, you don't shoot from college three. Right. So you shoot 
You like are basically it's beyond NBA, I believe. Basically, everything Alabama does because they practice it. So their players get so used in the context of their offense of never taking anything mid range when they're scrimmaging because it's not worth anything. Even if you make the best mid range jumper ever, that's zero points, and the other team gets the ball and goes the other way. That's so they don't crazy. take them. Commitment. It's a commitment. So everything is at the rim or at the three point line. About half their shots that's, come from three. That's NBA stuff. And that's right. <laughs> that's NBA and stuff, when man. they are making them, they bomb you out of the building. Hey. <laughs> but but every once in a while they're going to have this game. It's old rockets. Yeah, it well, really every, is. Every yeah. once in a while they're going to have a game where they're just not making them, and that's how something like Oklahoma. You remember happens. the Ro- and the Rockets lost the game seven, and they went yeah. one for twenty seven from yeah. three. Right. right, they just failed them and that, when that, it mattered most. And that's the scary thing if you're an Alabama fan is yeah. like it's we're one bad shooting night that's away right. from getting caught. You are, but and, and so people will sometimes say, well, that's why it's a gimmicky offense, and you can't trust it. Well, Villanova won. A national championship. And he's got the Villanova point guard, right? Got yeah. Quinterly or what? Uh, yeah, Javon Quinterly, yeah. yeah. But like Villanova's second in the title, they played just like Alabama. About half their shots came from three. Yeah. I'll tell you this. They I, had five Gary, shooters on the court at all times. I'm, and, I'm interested in you talking about Alabama because I've had uh, more than a few NBA guys tell me that the Miller kid is just unbelievable. He, he's Brandon he, Miller. He's yeah. who I. He's going to be like one of the top five picks. I've probably. got a new mock draft coming out today, and he will be the third pick. Wow. Behind that's Victor and Scoot. Scoot. Right. Wow. That's crazy. You yeah, said yeah, 22 this, points. That's crazy. This brand they, no, they're, they're 11 and 0 in the SEC, 10 double digit wins, and they're winning the games by 22 <laughs> points. And that's not average. an easy conference that's to win. No, they, they, yeah. they're, they're treating Alabama is treating the SEC the way the great Gonzaga teams yep. treat the WCC or the John Calipari Memphis teams treated that version of Conference USA. They're bombing everybody. They beat yes. like Vanderbilt beat Tennessee two nights ago. Yeah. I saw that. Alabama beat Vanderbilt by 57. <laughs> 57? By 57. What's Jerry, your problem, NATO? J- J- What's Jer- your problem? Jerry, Jerry Stackhouse sat down for his postgame press conference, and he said, we just played the wrong team at the wrong time. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, look, so that, the, the Houston game that you would have the best chance at is obviously not the one there. It's the one at home. Yeah. It is the last game of the season, and that will be – Alex Lomax and DeAndre Williams' second senior day. <laughs> <laughs> and I think they get another poster. I can't wait. For, and, <laughs> may, and maybe not their last. I think DeAndre, if he wants it, still has another year. <laughs> no, no, there's no way. I swear. GB, I think he does. You're kidding. I think he's seven seasons. Uh, this is his fourth year of college basketball, and he, he still has the COVID year, I believe. Bro, he's older than Devin Booker. Yes. Right. Well, here's the thing. I don't have any – I haven't asked anybody this. <laughs> Bro. I, I believe he's got another year of eligibility. And if he does, I have no idea why he wouldn't take it. Because where else is he going to make the type of money he can make FedEx. playing? I mean, at some point yeah. you feel weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do. You know He's mean? like 27 yeah. years like, old. Like, like, like me and you yeah. going to Tin Roof yeah. or something. Yeah. Like, like, just because you, know. just you can get in Tin Roof <laughs> yeah. doesn't mean you should be at Tin there Roof. Was, there was an age where we weren't going to, uh, what's it called? What's the one Holy that Jeremy Hunt got in the fight at? I found oh, 152? Room. Yeah. Do you know I asked Roser if 152 was still around last week? And he's like, bro, it's been gone for years. Yeah, it's been gone like, for like five years, bro. I had no idea. Dude, like five or six years. I'm going to blow your mind again. I just found another one. Oh. DeAndre Williams is 20 days older than Jalen Brown. Oh, wait. <laughs> He's still playing college basketball. So if he has one more year, yeah, he might come back. Like, okay, but he the, might come so back. let's say Just you get a name, image, and likeness deal together for 150 grand. Where he can't make oh, the 150 true. grand that's playing true. basketball. Jalen J- Brown's been in the NBA since 2016. So <laughs> if he can come back, I actually saw him doing an ad the other day for Brookhaven. I was like, this is hilarious. <laughs> what was that joke what? he had? He did an ad for Brookhaven. He was like, come, come eat at Brookhaven. I was like, what the hell? Are you <laughs> serious? What? Well, who was our guy that owned Brookhaven? He was a big booster. What was it? There was some was story. Rick? Uh, Rick Spell. He owns Brookhaven. Yeah, yeah. He was well, a big Memphis booster. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, he's yeah, well, that's he, how you can connect all yeah, that stuff. Hey, yeah. come eat at Brookhaven. Well, that's yeah. where Penny well, that's, does his coaches show. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That, yeah, that's all. Um, that, that's the way this stuff works. Like, I, I, I don't think this is happening, but one thing that could happen, theoretically could happen, if Penny Hardaway put that restaurant in somebody else's name, and maybe he doesn't even have to put it in somebody else's name, yeah. then you can just use that restaurant to hand out name, image, and likeness deals. Oh, Oh, wow. Oh, that is a good idea. Yeah, that's the way this stuff works. Mm. Just 
Mm. Yeah, these guys aren't really worth four hundred thousand dollars to to tweet about Brookhaven. <laughs> like whatever you're paying DeAndre Williams to tweet about Brookhaven, yeah. you'd be better off paying you, <laughs> you know, or me or whatever. Yeah, they don't. But, but that's yeah. not what it's about. It's about how do we compensate this person so that we can get him and keep him, and that's, that's happening great. all over the country right and now. Veteran leadership. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we don't know. No, there, there was a story. I think it was about DeAndre because you and I were joking about it in text. Uh, at some point over the past year or two, whenever, and it was like uh, DeAndre Williams used to babysit somebody's kid, and we were like, DeAndre Williams used to babysit me. <laughs> 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 DeAndre Williams was my babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Man. If he comes back from the album, nah, bro. Penny got to tell him to go on. All <laughs> <laughs> this is, but this is what you're gonna see, unless, like, like, how about here's another one for you. Again, I have no insight. I haven't asked anybody. Drew Timmy might be back in school next year. Oh, God. <laughs> I saw that. I did see that. Okay, because it's the same thing. Like right now, I'm told he's making couple million dollars in name oh and likeness deals. God. So if um, if your options are get a two way or make two million dollars, play them one more year at Gonzaga, yeah, what are you you're gonna super do? Super famous in that city and yeah, it's just, you. Yeah, it's just, it, we've reached a point in college basketball where it, it is you can legally make a lot of these guys can legally make more money playing college basketball than they can make playing professional basketball. Unless you're an NBA player, the most money you can make Playing basketball is now in college basketball. Yeah. It's not Spain. It's not Australia. It's not the G League. It's college basketball. Don't you can see a lot of these guys coming back to school. Memphis yeah. this weekend plays against Temple of the Dog, which you would think is a nothing game, except that was a two-point game. And they're coached by former Grizzly Aaron McKee. They are. They um, So that's the game on Sunday. What time do they play? It's 11 a.m. 11 a.m.? Yeah, it's yeah. Super Bowl. Remember, Tem- Temple won at Houston. Oh, no. And they beat, uh, was it was at 61 59 the they've first got, time they Ken, played. Kendrick hit the shot. They That's got right. A, Kendrick, they, oh, yeah. Kendrick hit that base. Temple's Kendrick got a few good there. wins. They beat uh, Villanova. That's not great, but they beat Villanova. They beat Rutgers. Rutgers is top 20 at Ken Palm. They have beaten VCU, which might win the Atlantic 10. And then, of course, they, they've beaten, they won at Houston. Rutgers so. is pretty good. You know, uh, Brevin's brother's an assistant coach for mm-hmm. Rutgers. Yeah. Brandon they had, Knight. Uh, oh, did who's you, the, who's did you see him pop they, off the other day? Uh uh-uh. uh. He oh, did? Oh, yeah. When Jim Beheim made those comments, did you see his Beheim comments? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So How about that, everybody buying their yeah, team? Yeah, he's like, Pitt bought a team, and, yeah. and Brevin's brother went to Pitt. Oh. So he's like, Pitt bought a team, and Wake Forest bought a team, and then like, Steve Forbes calls. He's like, what do you mean I bought Wake a team? Wake Forest, <laughs> but nobody makes any money. He's like, he's like, he's like, I, did, he's like I would have loved to have bought a team. <laughs> <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't have the money. But um, so when Beheim, I think when he brought Pitt into it, so then Brandon Knight – popped on Twitter and was like, um, something, something, something. You need to be careful because we know who was really buying players way before it was allowed. Oh, oh wow. And we know who got paid back then and who didn't at wow. Syracuse. And, yeah, and that's when Jim started well, releasing Brent, statements. You, you ain't, you oh, ain't no. getting Carmelo Anthony for nothing. Yeah, wait, yeah. Well, not, only, not only was Brandon a player, a uh, great player at Pitt, uh, he was an assistant for Jamie. Dixon yeah, yeah, there yeah. also. So, I mean, he's yeah. he, yeah, yeah. long tenure there. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever been to Syracuse, but yeah, you guys may do something to make you go there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Be a journalism it's, student. It's, like, co- it's, yeah. it's cold and gray. Yeah, Sheesh. It's like gray. It's like its permanent color is gray. That's oh. So, I guess on Sunday, we'll have the Tigers at 11, then the Grizzlies it's are so playing weird. the Celtics, and that'll be Luke Jeez. Kennard's debut, I guess. <laughs> oh, my God. Luke and Kennard then, used to date uh, the Chrisley girl. He did. He took her to the draft, somebody uh, yeah. tweeted me. Yeah. I don't remember that. He took her to the draft. Like, if I remember correctly, because I was, uh, I'm still am buddies with his agent, they were out in L.A. because he's with CAA, mm. and, or he was at the time of the draft, and they were out in L.A. having a dinner, and she was there. And somehow he introduced himself to her or vice versa. That, and they, it was just a random. They met at a restaurant in L.A. Oh, wow. and started dating. I so think that's true. I checked it. We, we checked yesterday. Well, he got married last year. Is that yeah, right? He got married uh, in August, August of last year. Yeah, 2021 or something. And uh, Kleiman did say he's not here, available, et cetera. Like that they, all of them are going to have to go through their physicals and then the trade's got to get completed. Are we expecting so, Mike to play? Uh, I don't know. Well, Krasinski's don't know. here and yeah. Roser saw him. You I saw, saw Mike him. at shoot around. Yeah, I okay. Saw him. He hey, was Bob. with he was with uh, he was walking with Gobert. Okay. By the way, Luke Kennard uh, passed LeBron James an all time leading scorer in Ohio. So that's your that's a that's a nugget for you. Is that true? Yeah, he passed LeBron. Yeah. 
Canard's like, bucks. Canard's All I like, hear is we just traded for the goat. Exactly. But, Canard, but Canard's go- like second all-time. There's still somebody ahead of Canard. He's not number one in Ohio, Hold I don't on. think. All time. They said that, uh, I mean, uh, and Kleiman was talking about, like, dude, we needed shooting and we got shooting. And that is, it is persuasive to believe that, you know, when they said there's only, and he did not say this, but that stat yesterday where there's only two guys that have taken over 500 threes and number one and number two are both Grizzlies now. Yeah. Like, you just needed somebody else that can space the floor and knock down a shot. Yeah, and he and the 52% from corner three is a pretty good number. I've always liked Luke Kennard. Yeah, I think Luke Kennard's good. Yeah, yeah like the, shoot, the shooting is undeniable. I, I wonder. Defending. Yeah, that's like it. that's the thing. Like, he can, can shoot you, the hell out of the ball? Yeah, but oh, like, yeah. can you? Because everybody's like, "Ooh, you got John, you got Dez on one side, and Kennard on the other." But can you play them all together at the same time? Well, the other thing is in the playoffs, do they just throw you in every action? Right. Target right. you. Right. Yeah. You know, can you hold up to where you can't be targeted? Because Jaren can only make up for. I mean, he can't guard everybody. But well, this is one of the things. I, <laughs> you know, I mean, he can't yeah. guard everybody's man. Right. I mean, he's got a lot to clean he up. He basically does. Yeah. yeah, I feel like he does. Sometimes. But like, you know, it is great to have great shooters, but they're meaningless unless they're on the court. That's right. And so you got to figure out how to keep them on the court. And there's a, you know, there's a reason he was playing 20 minutes a game. Yep. You know, and not not something more than that. Number That's one right. in Ohio high school basketball scoring. Gary, when did you get to CBS? 2006. Oh, so you probably covered this guy in the Big Ten. Yeah. John Diebler. Of course. With oh, the, yeah. Ohio State. Yeah, John Diebler. He's the only one in Ohio uh, high school basketball to ever score over 3,000 points. Yeah, 3,000 points. He's first, and then Luke Kennard's number two. Jay Bronson is number three. Geno Ford, number four. And LeBron, your King James, at number five. Fifth? Wow. Bob Huggins is 12th. How you got the scoring record in the NBA, but not in Ohio? <laughs> <laughs> How's that happen? Dang, bro. Come on, That's you gotta go tough. Back. Yeah, that's tough, man. Uh, just, he, was just ma- he was making the right play back then, too. Uh, K- yeah, K- everybody, Kareem bro. better be glad he didn't grow up in Ohio. He'd have yeah. been yeah. passed years <laughs> ago. Exactly. <laughs> For respect. All uh, right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll find out about Conley and if he's playing tonight. Our buddy John Krasinski uh, from The Athletic is in town. He's going to join us in studio on the other side. Chris Furnish, show. Hungry as a bear? Grizzlies fans can score big by ordering their favorite combos. If you pick up the Burrito Supreme combo from your local Taco Bell through February 21st, you'll score a key tag good for a free Nacho Cheese Doritos Locos Taco on future visits. What's better than a Grizzlies win? Free tacos at Taco Bell. Stop by today to get yours. Available participating Memphis area Taco Bell locations while supplies last. Free item valid per disclaimer on back of key tag. Nacho fries are back at Taco Bell. You know, the fries covered in bold Mexican spices you dip in a warm nacho cheese sauce. You can also dunk them into nacho cheese sauce or pour the sauce onto a pile of them and create like a nacho fries nachos. The thing is that you eat them with nacho cheese sauce. That's what makes them nacho fries. Otherwise, you're just eating fries and sipping on nacho cheese sauce, and that's the wrong way. Sorry, just really passionate about nacho fries. Nacho fries are back, only at Taco Bell. At participating U.S. Taco Bell locations for a limited time only while supplies last. Contact local store for hours and participation, which vary. Represent Every Day, presented by Delta Dental of Tennessee, is an incentive-based program focused on keeping youth K-6 through grade engaged in school in order to combat truancy. In partnership with Shelby County Schools and with the help of Delta Dental of Tennessee, the Grizzlies are focused on reducing chronic absenteeism among the most impacted schools in the Mid-South. Students in the program have the opportunity to win fun and unique prizes by going to school every day and being engaged in the classroom. For more information on the program, visit Grizzly Grizzlies.com slash community slash education today. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. And much like the Grizzlies have recruited legendary talent, we want you to be part of our team. Are you ready to be part of something legendary? Then visit www.bigriversteel.com. That's www.bigriversteel.com. Lieutenant, can you tell us what happened today? Our officers responded to a crash on I-40 westbound this morning. The driver of a pickup truck lost control of the vehicle, veered left, and went into a ditch. 911, what's your emergency? We've been in a crash. Please send someone. My fiancé is hurt. A front seat passenger was wearing a seatbelt. She survived without injury. The driver was not wearing a seatbelt and was ejected from the truck. He died at the scene. Law enforcement writes tickets to save lives. Brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. 
Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. Eight-time Grammy Award-winning Anita Baker. Anita Baker, the songstress, live in concert for one night only. FedEx Forum, November 22nd, 2023. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. Don't miss your chance to see the legendary Anita Baker live in Memphis. Shine Down, the Revolution's live tour. Friday, April 21st, FedEx Forum. With special guest, Three Days Grace. And from ashes to new. On sale now at LiveNation.com. Don't miss Shine Down Live. Are you ready? The toughest sport on dirt is back for an all-new 2023 season. Join the party and come watch the Cowboys of the PBR Pendleton Whiskey Velocity Tour ride the rankest bulls on the planet. The Bluff City Classic, February 18th at FedEx Forum. Tickets start at 15 bucks. Get yours at PBR.com or Ticketmaster.com. Get them while you can and find out what it means to be Cowboy. At Mountain Dew, we'd like to remind you that the world as we know it would not exist without the number zero. Which is why, at Mountain Dew, we'd like to recognize the number zero for making Mountain Dew Zero Sugar possible. Even with no sugar, it packs all of the bold citrus kick Dew Nation knows and loves. It's so good, you have no reason not to try it. As in zero. Get it? Crack open an ice-cold Mountain Dew Zero Sugar. It's zero sugar. All do. Welcome back to the Chris Vernon Show on GrindCityMedia.com and the Grind City Media YouTube page, presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Now, back to your host, Chris Vernon. Look, uh, ball so hard, they don't know what to rate me. Yeah. Uh, Pedal to the metal, I'm gone, don't chase me. Yeah. Uh, all up in my zone, can't no one face me. Yeah. All eyes on me, got the whole world away. Say I'm in my bag, that's an understate. My wings got a mask, so they gonna hate. The pack got me going like a runaway. On beats, I go down like I'm from the bay. Let me demonstrate. Watch me float to the bank, I levitate. I'm in my zone, NCAA. Straight to the top, high elevate, scoring on every play. Yeah. Uh, top notch play, I ain't never been better. Yeah. Thanks to everyone who got it, now I gotta bend better. Yeah. I knew I was the man before anyone told me. Yeah. All right, we're back. Chris Vernon. At least it's nice outside today. I mean, it's a little cold. It's nice outside. Uh, sun's out. Uh, if you are looking to bet on this game this weekend, or I guess you can bet on the game tonight, uh, Caesar Sportsbook is our sponsor. And you can go to your app store today. And you can type in Caesars and you can download it. It is free to download. And in addition to that, your first bet is on them. You can get back up to $1,250 back as a free bet if you don't win using the code VernonFull. Vernon full. I've already got my Chiefs bet down. I bet on the Chiefs, so if you want to follow me on that, you can. Brian Edwards from Vegas Insider is going to join us a little bit later on the show, and we'll get his bets and prop bets for the weekend. John Krasinski is one of our favorite writers in the country. Only gets to come in town a couple of times, except when it's the playoffs. He's here for the playoffs. Uh, from Minnesota, writes for The Athletic, as you can see right on here. his garment. Yeah, we got to get jackets around. Yeah, I did. Fly the flag, man. we had Gary Parish in a CBS <laughs> sweatshirt and now John Krasinski hey. in an athletic sweatshirt. The huge audience, man. I got to tap in. And I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get it out there. Free advertising. Yeah, no absolutely. big look. Um, 
First of all, I just said I'm betting on the Chiefs. Do you have a rooting interest in the Super Bowl at all? I, I'm, I'm not really. I'm, I'm glad these two are playing. I think they're. I was actually rooting for the Bengals. I'm a Burrow guy, but um, uh, it, I will be rooting for the Chiefs. Uh, I'm not a. I'm not an Eagles guy at all. So uh, gotcha. I'm a, I, I like Mahomes. My kid is a big Mahomes fan. So we'll be every we'll kid. It. I try everyone to tell is. people this. Right? Everyone is. Oh, this is so good. I'm glad we get to talk kids. Yes. I said. Odell Beckham Jr. was a big one when William was a little bit younger. But in terms of, like, cool, yes, Mahomes is the one NFL guy that breaks through the NBA guys. Agreed. He, yes. And that's really it amongst kids. There are Yes, there are not that many. I think Justin Jefferson is getting there. Yep. He's not there S- yet. Certainly locally yeah, for you. Yeah, definitely locally. But, yes, Patrick Mahomes – He's got the Fortnite skin. Yeah. He's got all of that, all that stuff, and he's a flashy, super entertaining guy. And kids know him definitely in a different way than they know any other NFL guy that I know of. I know. Right there. Yeah, it's it, crazy. You know, it's kind of crazy because you see the numbers of the, you know, the viewership and whatever. Mm-hmm. But I, just amongst kids, those kids, they know all these NBA guys. Yep. And they've got their shoes, and they try mm-hmm. to dress like them, and they follow them all on social media. But – NFL, it's really not like that. There's only one that really transcends, and he's he's on like that, you know, Curry, yes, you know, whatever level. Because Curry's kind of their guy. It always, always felt like hundred percent. They yep. didn't care about LeBron's thing. Did your your kid doesn't care about LeBron, right? Yeah, I, I, I mean, he he likes him because he's a big because because he knows he's really really good. But yeah, he's definitely more Steph. Yeah, he loves Ja. Loves Ant. He's a big D-Lo guy. He's had a tough time with the trade oh, this week. Oh, so no. Because your son one. is, what, 10? 10 years old. Yep. So I told him, and tears were starting to come down. Oh, and so, you know, that's just what it man, is. So, yeah, that's it's, tough. It is a tough thing. Well, but. hey, he could be my kid, and last year during the playoffs, buy a D'Anthony Melton jersey. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a zero. The number was yeah, cool. Yeah, the jersey was cool. For sure. He had met D'Anthony, and D'Anthony yep. smiles all the time. Yeah. It was all meant to be. And then, no doubt. Yeah, that jersey no, hasn't okay. got worn much That's since. okay. My mom's favorite player was Valanchunas, and I bought her a jersey for her birthday, and then they traded <laughs> him a week later for the <laughs> pick, so. you should get like a grace period of like at least a month if you buy the jersey and your player gets traded I think they you should do be have able... that now on fan do they Addicts. okay yeah 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 okay jersey yep. insurance i might need that all yeah. right so we were asking about the conley thing look we love yes mike conley you know mm. he's a legend around these parts we'll forever swear by him i actually was happy with this trade deadline because The idea, I already had to do it with Gasol, the idea of having to root for Mike Conley in a Lakers uniform Mm. is a bridge too far. Could (laughs) never do that. Because I want good things to happen for him. Yes. You know what I mean? And But I was like, I wanted Mark Gasol to lose, for sure, (laughs) when he was playing for the Lakers. So I I had already done it with one Mm. Grizzly. I didn't want to do it with another one. And so, and Conley going to Minnesota, I do think it's a – very, very good fit for him. Uh, before we get into that trade, do you think he's playing tonight? I, I think he is. He's uh, he was he was at shoot around. We just got done with that. He was on the court with them. The, the, I think they're going through the final physical yeah. uh, things to get all of that done. But as far as I know, he's he's going to be in. I, I guess there's a chance that he doesn't. But they need him out there. And he wants to play, so I, I think he's going to play. Yeah, because that's what that's what Kleiman, I went to his media veil today. Kleiman was saying about the Kennard thing, that he can't, like, everybody can't get to where they need to be to do mm-hmm. all the paperwork and the physicals in time. Well, yeah, so that I, he I, won't be able to do tonight. Like, I know, so for, for their little three team, because when Russell went to the Lakers, he was in L.A. last night. Um, yeah. I know that they're not playing until tomorrow, I believe. Um, but I think that... Is it, it, as long as all of that gets taken care of and it's not some sort of bureaucracy that gets in the way, I think he's going to play. And so. Westbrook's physical doesn't even matter, right? Because they're just buying him out. So right, I don't yeah. even think we even even need to. Yeah, yeah I, I bet he's not even flying to Utah. No, <laughs> I don't no think chance. so. No, no, uh, no, absolutely no. not. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's going across the street to the Clippers, right? <laughs> so, so they say. I don't know. All right. So how did this happen? I a guy sent me an interview that you had done. Yesterday, mm-hmm. I guess on the radio, yeah. saying, and this wasn't like, I'm always leery of uh, the, you know, the trashing of guys yes. when they go out of town, right? right? Like you saw it yesterday. That, no matter what you think about Westbrook, 
bro, calling him a locker room vampire yeah. and all this shit they yeah. did on TV. Like, that's what Dave McMenamin went on TV and said. Mm -hmm. They've got a vampire out of their locker room. <laughs> oh, come on, bro. Like, right. and again, somebody's going to write what a scumbag Russell Westbrook is, mm -hmm. you know, at, on the way out. Your stuff was always all up front. So it wasn't, I didn't right. feel like yesterday when the guy sent me this clip, you were speaking out of school. And it wasn't anything that was, it reminded me a little bit of the, uh, Mark Gasol Fisdale thing mm -hmm. where it, I mean Fisdale would get mad when I asked him about it but it was playing out in front of our eyes you saw right. a player rolling his eyes when I saw Minnesota earlier this year you, you weren't here for this game right I, I was like bro like these guys like it, Russell won't even listen to him like he starts uh, go bear starts talking to him and he's like yeah whatever <laughs> and just like walks away from him and rolls his eyes at him and he doesn't throw him the ball it's like there's something awry there and you kind of talked about that yesterday that because russell's having this amazing month Shooting and a half yeah. yeah and really season yep um and yet they needed they felt like they needed to go a different direction and a lot of it seemed to stem from once gobert came in he was not very welcoming to this idea and never tried to play nice with it yeah so there's there's a lot of things to unpack here um and it's i think my comments have gotten a lot of attention, but I'll try and like be as clear as I can be. Throughout the season, we watched it, and it was clear that they were not on the same page. Now, this was not Jimmy Butler running roughshod over the Timberwolves, the young Timberwolves. This was not a super toxic environment. This was not that. But what you could see was that D'Angelo Russell had his frustrations with Rudy Gobert. And there are a lot of players who have played with Rudy Gobert who have had frustrations with him, just in terms of if he can't catch a pass, if he's not finishing at the rim, uh, you know, some of those things. And so the, the difference, I think, was that D'Angelo Russell does kind of more wear his emotions on his sleeve. It's a little easier to see that things were bothering him that way. I think that there have been other players and Donovan Mitchell's been in this group and there's been others that try and be a little more diplomatic about it. Mm -hmm. um, now, that is one of the reasons. And this wasn't even like just body language and no. what you saw on the like, court. Like, in the locker room, yeah. you said he would be like... I mean, it was it was clear like in the conversations in, in the locker room and things, there would be, you know, trying to figure out how do I how do I work with this guy is, is, is a lot of what it was. And so you have that element of it. You also have his contract situation. He's going to be a free agent. They were not going to resign him. And you have kind of, in addition to the great shooting that he has, he's, he's a defensive liability. He's had other issues from a performance perspective as well. So when a team trades him, it's like, well, why didn't you say all this before? But, we had been writing most of the season that they were having a hard time getting on the same page. Like, this is not new. Now, some of the specifics of it, I think, were new. But in my view as a reporter, I was watching some of this play out. And as you know, every team has personality conflicts on it. Sure. Every team has th bridges that uh, gaps that need to be bridged. And so I just wanted to watch and see this play out. And maybe they would have worked all of that out over the long haul. And everything would have been fine. Clearly, the Timberwolves got to a point where they said, we're not going to resign D'Angelo Russell, and we have to move him along. Why did he get traded? A multitude of reasons, including that he was not a good basketball fit for Gobert, and, and they were not a good personality fit either. So It does feel like, also, with this year, that while it was kind of like a D'Lo, Cat-centric mm -hmm. team, for some time, and then you have Edwards come in, and Edwards kind of eases away his rookie year. Then you have this ascent that takes place last year, and then especially it becomes very evident in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And then it feels like it took a little while to take this year with Edwards. Probably why, I mean, I'm glad he got named to the All-Star team today, mm -hmm. but why he wasn't, because if he would have played like he did the entire time, it would have been without question. But it did, it feels like it has morphed into his team and that he, he, the, he there's a pecking order and he's at the top of the pecking mm -hmm. order now right when did you sense that that had really taken hold yeah and, and in fairness to in fairness to D'Angelo in this respect at the start of the season everyone was trying to figure out Rudy like and so you had you had Towns you had 
Go, uh, you had Gobert, you had Russell, you have Edwards. And the four of them together were, I think, tripping over each other while they were trying to incorporate things. And so I do think that was part of the reason that Edwards didn't sort of hit the ground running and, and take a leap. Then Towns gets injured. He's been out for more than two months. Um, and as they sort of tried to figure out how do you account for Towns' absence, um, they reconfigured the way that they are running their offense. And instead of Russell being the point guard and the ball in his hand and the initiator all the time, they put Edwards in that role and Russell was moved off the ball. And I think that just put more responsibility on, on Edwards' shoulders. Uh, he could drive to the basket, he can shoot it, he can make plays for others. And he took more ownership of the offense now um, and and, and it, that confidence has grown. And Russell, to his credit again, shifted to off the ball, catch and shoot, become more of a spot-up shooter, and has crushed in that role. 50-40-90 um, practically well, in, in and his it splits. Saves you, and it saves you those crap videos going around of him just standing in the corner looking pissed yes. off, right? Yep. He, if he's got the ball, he can't stand in the you corner. You activate Edwards all the time. And <laughs> right. he, as, as you know, he is the one guy who can physically overwhelm anybody and anybody anybody and and so there's no smoke and mirrors with him there's no kind of cleverness and it's like i am bigger stronger and faster than you and i'm quicker and i'm going to get to the cup and 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 deal with it and so it just puts so much more pressure on the defense to have edwards in that Harden like role. I have told uh, so part of the Towns thing going out has been our old buddy Kyle getting a much bigger role. I told you, mm. I told you, oh, you'd he's love him. So many threes. Yeah. How, how would you love him? Uh, oh, he's the best. It's terrific. Like basketball yeah. and off the court. Off the dude the court, is awesome. Everything. Um, power forward. He slid right in. He plays defense. He he has really. That's the other thing is they have put the ball in his hands a lot. Yep. He Chris Finch trusts him. Undeniably, whenever you see the Timberwolves in a funk offensively within a game, the ball switches and Kyle Anderson's on the point. He makes great decisions. He gets people involved. He slow mows his way to the basket and scores somehow. Mm -hmm. And he, he, for a lot of the season, he's been shooting 40% from three. So... Um, I know. I know. Yeah. You like, know, you know, he hit one here and he turned to our bench and he goes, I've been practicing. <laughs> no, he, no, in Minnesota, he yep. was cooking us. Yeah. He's pointing at the bench. Get him off me. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, the radio. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you better get him off me. Yeah. Yeah. So and, uh, and, like, dang. and he's so smart. He's so mature. Yeah. Like it's just that this group he needs him so badly. And he's and so when when he he's had some back issues, so when he's out of the game, you can tell. Like they it just is not the same without him out on the court. What do you think fans think about that deal? Do they think they got enough enough in return for D'Lo? Are they happy with Conley? It, it's uh, um, it's it's split because it's you know some people believe that D'Angelo Russell is the worst thing ever and is the 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 center of every problem that the Wolves have, and then there are there are D'Lo backers and lovers who I'm telling you outside of Derrick Rose, I've never seen a hive. More devoted. Oh, there's D-Lo there, there, high. There is a D-Lo high. Wow. Like, oh, D'Angelo. Yes. I had no idea. Yes, a hundred percent, and they <laughs> back him so to the hilt. They and love so it. They say it's everybody else's fault. It's everybody fault. else's fault. Like, I love it. And so does both, that include your son? Yeah, <laughs> it does. Yes, a hundred percent. He's in the D low. Yeah, high. he knocks down threes, Dad. Why are they trading for him? Why are yeah. they trading him? Like mm -hmm. he shoots. He's he's great. And yeah. and so it's obviously it's not on either one of those scales. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's in the middle. But so fans, some fans are really excited to see him go and they want to see Conley come in. And some fans are like, man, you traded a 26-year-old who's 50, 40, 90 in the last two months for a 35-year-old point guard who's missed 12 games. What's going on? And so it is really split among Wolves fans on, on, on what they're going to see and, and, and what they wanted What'd out of What did you this. think about in terms of the return they got? Well, I, I, so I've been one who said, like, with, when you, if you assume that Carl Anthony Towns is coming back soon, is he? Which I think he is. He's here. He's here. Right? He, got, yep, he got some workouts in before the game yeah. or before shoot around. And so I think post All-Star break, he's going to be close to coming back. When you have that, when you have reintroduced him, you have too many mouths to feed. Mm -hmm. So I think that they needed a 
D'Lo is a gunslinger. Like, you want to talk quarterbacks, he's Brett Favre. He's, right. he's throwing it all over the place. And super high ceiling, maybe some low floors as well. I think they need a game manager. They need yeah. just someone in the middle that's going to organize the offense, keep the mouths fed, yep. and isn't going to be starving for his own thing. Again, like I think D'Lo was great for them offensively and did a lot of really good things, and he is definitely not, shouldn't be the only scapegoat in why they've been sort of middling all year. Um, but I do think that for the fit of this roster, this is the kind of point guard I think it makes need. him better. Yeah. I do. I because Mike, look, the biggest surprise team this year has been Utah. Yeah. And I don't think that, that people overlook that. Like, he's averaging a lot of assists. I mean, he's just 7. solid, 7. man. Yeah. He's and, solid. And he he's at that point in his career, he ain't going to give you 24. Right. But you don't need 24. Right. Yeah. You want everybody else to. He'll get guys in best positions to score. He's always been. That's always been his mindset is to be the Run the show, good team, point guard. Yeah, yeah team, and man. and the other the other thing about this is, obviously they've taken a ton of heat for the Rudy trade, and it has not looked good. Um, but he is not going anywhere. Right, forty million dollars. Nothing he's he can under, do. So you have to find a way to maximize him. And Conley is has had success with him, so I think he has more trust in Rudy than anyone in that Wolves locker room, frankly, because they have not seen. Rudy really be effective the way that Conley has. So he's going to come in and be able to say, hey, this guy can be really good for us and help us win a lot of games. Here's how we do it. Mm. Um, I had a stat in the story yesterday. D'Lo threw 13 alley-oops lobs to uh, Rudy this year so far. What? Yes. Just and, 13? And, and Conley threw 51 last year. Like, like so, like, 30, 13? Yes. So, and and Russell just is not a lob passer. He just passer. doesn't throw he the ball. He's, he's, he's not. Like, yeah, I'm not throwing this yeah. ball. Well, and, what, and, and what's crazy is because, and I will tell you this: that was a developed trait. Yes. This is funny to say because that's a developed trait for Conley because mm -hmm. we never had a guy that could dunk. Yep. He never threw lobs for us. So I talked to Conley about this when he was with Utah um, before. Like, hey, what do you see with the Wolves and why this isn't working? And Conley said. The first year with Rudy, like it did not go well. And I he went in the summer while Rudy was playing internationally and called up Greg Oden and just threw lobs to him all summer long. Wow. But he's like, I was not used to playing with the vertical threat and yep. it took a while. And same with Russell, same with Anthony Edwards. Like they just have not done it. And again, not Russell's fault. That's just the way that it is. That what Rudy needs is something that was foreign to a lot of the Wolves players. So really, and that is the way he is effective it is the way. offensively. He, you, he's not catching pocket passes no. in traffic. No. Like that's not he happening. So that's why Kyle Anderson has been a breath of fresh air too, because he's been able to just get into the paint, just a little lob. You not have to be, you know, Jalen Rose to Chris, Chris Weber from half court. Just, right. just a little thing. Just get it up high and let him catch it and that's what I think Conley will do. How do you think uh, the ownership changeover has affected any of this or has it? Um, it, it well, it, it hasn't a ton in terms of like... A-Rod was at the last game yeah. here. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're so around. He, they're around. Like, yes. they're even, to even see... Yeah, you I, don't see a lot, I was like, wait, is that A-Rod? You don't yeah. see a lot of opposing owners at games yeah. at, during the regular season. Yep. No, they're, yeah, they're around a lot. Um, they were very kind of they led the way in getting Tim Connolly from Denver. It was it was a Alex Rodriguez, Mark Lori production, not a Glenn Taylor production. Um, there are people around the league who don't believe that they have the money to finish this, mm. but they steadfastly say we're going to do it. They're closing on the second installment in March and um, and headed forward, but it is a unique situation because you have the right, the guy who's it, still in charge yeah. and he's trying to kind of make it an easy tr uh, acclimation and transition for when these guys come in so they don't have to come in and just, like, make a bunch of changes right away that they're gradually making changes that they want. But still, like, they are not the primary owners yet. And so, like, how much – how much So do you think the they decision all today? got together on the Gobert thing? They did. Thing? Yes, they did. Taylor so, and Taylor, the new owners Lori, all agreed. A-Rod, they all agreed, yes. So that, it's that everybody's was fault. So it's everybody's <laughs> yeah. fault, yeah. That's the thing. It's like yeah, you no, can you look at it. You, there's no finger pointing because they all said this is the way to go. We want – we think this team – 
after what happened to the with the Grizzlies in the playoffs, just yep. get Brandon Clark killing them. But I thought you were so close. So close. Dude, we we had to come back from 19 twice. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. mean, they could have won five of those games. Oh, you they, needed they to. A game I, I thought they could have yep. just augmented that team a little bit and, you know, add a couple things. And then you get the new, you know, there's an internal development that obviously takes place with Edwards. What we saw with Edwards last year, I'm like, bro, no, oh, dude. there's nobody that can guard this guy. Guard. Yeah. Is Cat going to be able, like, when Cat comes back, is he going to be able to, like, That's do the, the whole, like, Answer the guy now. Like, so, I'm going to be able to the pecking order thing. So, I, I think that he will. Um, I think if he comes back and things are going well, they're winning games, they're competitive, and I think he will slide in and be a great teammate. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns wants to win games. He's just been, he's lost a ton of games in his life. He took and, a backseat to Jimmy. Yeah. I know Jimmy's dog man. <laughs> he did kind of right. debo I mean, it, though. You know? He kind of like yeah. snatched it from him. Yeah, right. But he, did. <laughs> but he, he, will be, he will be happy to ride shotgun with the right people. And he and Ant get along very well. Um, he thinks he has a lot of respect for what Edwards can do. Um, I think Edwards does a really good job of, um, of fostering that relationship as well. He kind of acts like the little brother sometimes and then the big brother in some other uh, situation. So they have a good vibe together. So I'm not worried at all about how they share the spotlight. I don't think that's going to be an issue. It's just like, how do they defend? How do they get out in transition? How do they do some of those schematic things um, to incorporate two bigs? Because they, that was yeah. the problem early on. They were This is they one of the things the I talked meet. about with Kevin, which is, you know, and again, the, the D'Lo thing is is the D'Lo thing, right? They, if they weren't going to bring him back and getting mm-hmm. something of a value for him, but the idea that like Conley was the target or what you want to go in order to make the Gobert thing better, right? And one of my concerns would be, uh, am I making decisions based upon that decision, which is not always for the greater good, because it. D'Lo might just be the one that was willing to be a prick yeah. out loud and on the court show his discontent and blow him off and not listen. But it might be within the team, sure. right? I that think people, it absolutely people, is. That people are frustrated D'Lo's with the D'Lo's not the thing. only one that yeah, has had problems. Yeah, when you bring in a guy yeah. that's $40 million, it's like, okay, we had our thing going, but now everything's got to center around this guy. And now we just traded my buddy because I'll imagine – they, they're friends with Russell and, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Like, I mean, yep. they're at least, they've been teammates and played yes. big games yeah, together, right? Yep. They cared about it. I'm sure that mm-hmm. they'll uh, at least put out the cursory te- tweet yeah. about, uh, you know, how much we love each other. Yeah. <laughs> Whether they did or not. But that the frustration about the other, so it's like, okay, now, now Conley just is like the only guy that's aligned with Rudy Gobert, right? Like yeah. Rudy didn't have anybody, but now he's got Mike Conley. Yeah. And, well, I, and I think like what you guys know and what they'll find out is Mike Conley is going to be great for Edwards. Of course. He's going to be great for Cat. Oh, yeah. He's going to be great for all of these guys because they, it, it, they need more adults in the room. Like they need more... He's played 73 playoff games. He's been in big spots. He, this is the team that has uh, had more technical fouls than anyone else in the league. They'd argue with the officials all the time. We're second. You might be second. We're second. But, like, but Conley has never had a technical foul in his life yeah. in the NBA. Like they need, he, I think he got one and it got rescinded. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yep. And so like, they need someone to be a steady hand and – um, yeah, Kyle Anderson is always telling Ky- him to shut up. Yes, yes. <laughs> he is. Yes. Uh, when I watch your games, yep. he's always yep. like, guys, stop, stop, stop. Exactly. Right? It's not going to do us any good. So you need more of that, and and I just think like that is where, yes, directly Mike Conley helps from a, Rudy Gobert directly mm-hmm. and helps that way, but he has so many other qualities that he brings that are going to be a benefit. Tim Connolly was telling us yesterday that they need to surround Anthony Edwards with players with good habits with players who are responsible and do things the right way. And that is what Mike Conley is. 100%, right? So. 100%. You are trying to it's, – it's the nurture thing, man. Yep. You nurture these guys along, and they see the guy that's at the gym at practice. They see what he's eating. They see the way he treats his wife. They see mm-hmm. the way he's around his kid. I mean, all that stuff is, has a profound impact when you have, like, a truly great veteran – that stuff has a profound impact on the young players. It they does. remember that forever, yep. forever, and they'll 
they'll call out that guy and remember him forever and playing with him and the impact that that guy had. Um, what do you make of the Pat Bev thing? Uh, well, I think that he wants, he would like to come back to Minnesota. I think there are plenty of people in Minnesota, especially the fans who would love to have him back. He was enormous for them last year from a mentality standpoint. Also a voice, because Conley is a lead by example. Yes. He's not, when you get in that huddle, he ain't barking right, everybody. Right, right. But I do not think that, as of right now, I don't think that there is an avenue for the Wolves to bring him back. Uh, they have a full roster. They've already bought out one player to make room for the trade. Um, and and so all, all I've been indicated was that they do not have an appetite to bring him back right now. You look at the way he played with the Lakers. Could he help on the court as much as some of the other guys that they have? I think they're, they have questions about that. And, but it's a um, practice, back sure. up voice yes. in the – on yeah. the bench in the locker room. Yes. That's yeah. his that's his real that's his, benefit. Yeah, that's his real benefit and his real role, but as of right now, I don't think that that's going to happen here. Interesting. What was the deal on the uh not I why was the Nas Reed thing out in the open? Like the not bringing back Nas Reed or that Nas Reed's not going to get a contract extension oh, I or think whatever. So, like, why the hell was that even out? I like him. Yes. And I, don't, I didn't understand why that was kind of like out there as I'm like, well, why would you – why, why would you do that now in terms of like, hey, yeah, we're moving on from Nas Reed after this year? Yeah, like, no, I, I don't think that's – I don't know that that's been accurately – portrayed or whatever because I, I would say that Nas is a free agent this summer right they have had conversations on a extension with him periodically throughout the year they have not yet come to one but I think that now that the trade deadline is over I think they're going to re-engage with him and try and try and get I something like done him. yeah he's a yeah, good he's a dog, talented man. player like he and he was really good when Rudy was out yes and and so and you, you look at it and you say why would you sign another center well you sign good players yeah. and then you figure it out like yeah. whether you trade Nas later, whether you, you, you make some other moves around, but like he is a good young player who likes being in Minnesota. So I do think that they will try to get a deal done. Whether they get to the right number or not, I don't know. But um, he is talented, like, and he can help, especially against small front courts. He crushes them. Do you so, think they got better? Uh, it, I do. Like, I, I think I marginally. Too. I think marginally better. I don't think this is a. It'll take a minute yeah, to take. And it's not, it's not a situation where I don't, I don't see them. Ultimate, all you know, vaulting into the top three in the West. I mean, even though as, as jam packed it is, Phoenix is way better. The, I think the Lakers got better. I think uh, Dallas with Kyrie. We'll see what happens, but it's a tougher West now. But I do think that they are more equipped to maximize their talent today than they were two days ago, and that'll give them a chance because they have a lot of talent. It's just they got to figure out a way to make the whole puzzle fit together, and, and that hasn't always been the case this Do you year. think it's probably seven or eight? I think somewhere in there, six, you seven, want, eight. You want to be – obviously, you want to be six. Yes. But if you can't be six, be getting seven. it at home. Yes. And you guys experience this yes. with the Clipper thing. Makes a difference. Right? It makes a massive it difference. It makes a huge difference. If you difference. could catch that game at home because it yep. was a hornet's nest yes. that night against the Clippers. Yeah, yeah. They came back from, from like 12 down in the second half and – Yep. And roared back, and they threw a big party as like oh, I, Pat as they on the score yeah. table. With the He's bed. crying with the with the Bud Lights and the so in the in the press conference, and that was fun. Like it was, it was fun. really fun for a team and a fan base that does not win much, mm -hmm. and so that was a good step. So yes, I think that they're in that six, seven, eight range, um, and then you see what happens. And like if the, all the pieces come together, even if they're in seven or eight and they win, it, you go into a, a first-round series maybe like they did last year, and you at least feel confident that you can put a scare into someone. Like it's I not going to be yeah, you get, a cakewalk. You, so. know, you know I had a tremendous amount of respect for them last year. Mm -hmm. I, I did not like the Gobert trade, not just because of my opinions on Gobert, my opinions on what I thought the Wolves were. I'm always, I think the margins are real thin in this stuff, and I did not think you guys were, for, and I liked all those guys. Yeah. Beasley, Vanderbilt, like those guys, you see, they They're have helpful. value. Yep. You know what I mean? They're going to be yep. playing for, those teams are, those are, those are players on good teams. Yes. Right? Yes. They're not just players on a team. Those guys can play on good teams mm -hmm. that can win. And, and that was a series that was marred by the officials, but, 
highly, highly. I mean, the, the super rule, competitive. Could, and when Malik Beasley, I'll never forget the show we did during that series. Malik Beasley said, "You know, we feel like we should have already won this series." I was like, "I agree with him. They, they should <laughs> yeah. have. You say they should have already won this series, yep. right? The fact that this is I should have been the president of America. Huh? I should have been the <laughs> yeah. president of America. But, but hey. he, I mean, but I mean, you can't blow leads like that. And yeah. they and they did blow those leads. Well, and then but, that's where maybe Mike Conley helps, right? Yeah. I mean, like just somebody settle you down, settle you down, get a good shot. That's like right. that's they, how many times do we see Russell Edwards? That's right. Force things down the stretch, yep. and then Ja knew what to do. I'm going right to the basket. And I'm going to get well, to the line. Let's, much like Ja, which we experienced, Edwards can be the best player in any oh, game. Yes. Any game he plays in, he could be the best player that night. Mm-hmm. Like he is. Special. And he's gotten even better this yep. year. It's yep. physically imposing, I, man. I, that is one thing. Like He has got to be at the very top of the most fun guys to cover. Oh, it's His been great. press conferences <laughs> are unbelievable. So, yeah, he gets the all-star nod right before shoot-around. We talked to him, and I just said, hey, Ant, like – What's your plan going into the game? Oh, it's like, and he did the whole "I don't care." No, no, no. I only care about winning games. No, when he didn't oh, oh, make it, ba- when he did he make didn't it, care. yeah. Now he cares. Oh, now yeah, he cares. So, <laughs> so now he says, "Yeah." Now he says this morning, he's like, "Shoot, I'm going in, and I'm going to take all the shots. I'm going for MVP." <laughs> like that's what he does. It's like now he's here and he's ready to go. He's like, "I'm going sh- to shoot all the balls." He's like, "I saw Russ, Russ Westbrook would do it one time where he got a hot streak and he went for MVP. I'm going for that." <laughs> <laughs> that so, is some real answer, yeah. Man. You so, know, I mean, that was so. It was so funny, but because I, you know, there's always people that don't see all the other ones, yeah. and so they saw the clip of after he didn't make All Star, yeah, and it was like this very measured. Yep. and they're like, I love watching his interviews. He's like a. 30, you know, he's almost like oh, a, yeah, yeah, a, yeah, an yeah. old 10-year you know vet. 10-year yeah. vet. And yeah. I'm like, what interview are you watching? I literally watched one last night where he said he eats 20 bags of hot fries. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? He's beautiful, he's man. He's hilarious. Yes. He's like he goes like McDonald's after games and stuff yeah. like that. Like well, he's just like, yeah. what he, he's like, young. He's, so, he's just authentic. He yes. just oozes that. Like, you, you know whatever he says is what he's thinking in general. Like, the, the all-star thing, he, he towed the line a little bit. But, like, Everything else is just like, this is who I am, and I'm going to be unapologetic about it. And you either like me or you don't. Mm-hmm. And everyone likes him. Like there's just yeah. there's nothing. Everybody, that you can't. it's like a Barkley. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Authentic. People love authentic- authenticity. They do. Well, and it was funny. Like during the playoffs last year, he had a couple of those moments. You know, talking about talking trash, you know, talking trash to a ten year old in the Memphis yeah. in, in the forum and stuff, and I'm loving it. And there's a lot of Grizzlies fans that follow me just from from all that. And they're like, Man, I don't want to like this kid. I know. Like they're like, I don't want to like this kid, but I can't yourself. help it. Yeah, like it's uh, if that, you that's don't the like it, yeah, or something's wrong. Yeah, I love <laughs> you. Yeah. Give me an ant jersey. Everybody, <laughs> loves, everybody, everybody jersey. loves him. Yep. Yeah. he's fun. He's great. He and he smiles all the time. Smiles. Which is, you know, that's just uh, when I talked about like to wrap it up the the Melton jersey. It was part mm-hmm. of the reason my kid loved Melton. Yeah, because Melton looked like he. He's got a job playing professional basketball, and he loves it. Yep, and what? <laughs> it's and, like yeah. a lot of these guys look pissed off all the time. Well, and that's what like they've the wolves have talked about that, and I agree. Like you hope that as the years go on, he holds on to that. Yeah, like I've seen oh, Kevin yeah. Love, Cat. Like I've seen them all come in, and they're wide eyed, and they're they're cool, and they're engaged, and then the business of the league grinds you down, mm-hmm. and hopefully that ant is able to hold on to that. Well, Just it starts that now. Yeah. Because I'll tell you this: it started with job. Yep. It's when the All Star thing hits, because and it's not the guy. It's the you don't have any time to yourself anymore. Yep. You're always responsible for everybody else. You're getting pulled seven hundred. Everybody's asking you to do something all the time. Yes. And that's you know there is a there's a bliss at the beginning. For Before sure. Before that yeah. hits. How many times did I tell you? It'll never be like this again. No. Yep. John, come on the show. Come hang out with it. I mean, we yeah. I, I couldn't we couldn't get five minutes if you needed it now. You know right. what I mean? People like making up like fake stuff. Like it goes like ant. People love ant. People love job. But like now people are making up fake videos about job, like not wanting to talk to kids. Yes. You see the video of him warming up with yeah. headphones in? They're like John Moran and Norris kids while warming up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He has headphones in yeah. warm. Yeah. What player do you know stops warming up? Hey, man, let me sign up. Because when you get big enough, <laughs> yeah, that's right. then they want to take you down. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, That's yeah. the yeah. way it is. It's like, everything. Ask you can't please. <laughs> yeah, you ask you can't please everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope we don't have Edwards and Nickelback in the same sense again going forward. Yeah, but, Nickelback. 
<laughs> All right, Grizzlies and Wolves tonight at FedEx Four. We're gonna come back, and Brian Edwards is gonna join us for Vegas Insider. Thanks, John. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, buddy. Back into this. Hungry as a bear? Grizzlies fans can score big by ordering their favorite combos. If you pick up the Burrito Supreme combo from your local Taco Bell through February 21st, you'll score a key tag good for a free Nacho Cheese Doritos Locos Taco on future visits. What's better than a Grizzlies win? Free tacos at Taco Bell. Stop by today to get yours. Available participating Memphis area Taco Bell locations while supplies last. Free item valid per disclaimer on back of key tag. Nacho fries are back at Taco Bell. You know, the fries covered in bold Mexican spices you dip in a warm nacho cheese sauce. You could also dunk them in a nacho cheese sauce or pour the sauce onto a pile of them and create like a nacho fries nachos. The thing is that you eat them with nacho cheese sauce. That's what makes them nacho fries. Otherwise, you're just eating fries and sipping on nacho cheese sauce, and that's the wrong way. Sorry, just really passionate about nacho fries. Nacho fries are back, only at Taco Bell. At participating U.S. Taco Bell locations for a limited time only while supplies last. Contact local store for hours and participation, which vary. Represent Every Day, presented by Delta Dental of Tennessee, is an incentive-based program focused on keeping youth K-6 through grade engaged in school in order to combat truancy. In partnership with Shelby County Schools and with the help of Delta Dental of Tennessee, the Grizzlies are focused on reducing chronic absenteeism among the most impacted schools in the Mid-South. Students in the program have the opportunity to win fun and unique prizes by going to school every day and being engaged in the classroom. For more information on the program, visit Grizzly Grizzlies.com slash community slash education today. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. And much like the Grizzlies have recruited legendary talent, we want you to be part of our team. Are you ready to be part of something legendary? Then visit www.bigriversteel.com. That's www.bigriversteel.com. Lieutenant, can you tell us what happened today? Our officers responded to a crash on I-40 westbound this morning. The driver of a pickup truck lost control of the vehicle, veered left, and went into a ditch. 911, what's your emergency? We've been in a crash. Please send someone. My fiancé is hurt. A front seat passenger was wearing a seatbelt. She survived without injury. The driver was not wearing a seatbelt and was ejected from the truck. He died at the scene. Law enforcement writes tickets to save lives. Brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. LifeCare Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At LifeCare, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at LifeCareAMB.com. Eight-time Grammy Award-winning, Anita Baker. Anita Baker, the songstress, live in concert for one night only. FedEx Forum, November 22nd, 2023. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. Don't miss your chance to see the legendary Anita Baker, live in Memphis. Shine Down, the Revolution's live tour. Friday, April 21st, FedEx Forum. With special guests, Three Days Grace. And from ashes to new. On sale now at LiveNation.com. Don't miss Shine Down Live. Are you ready? The toughest sport on dirt is back for an all-new 2023 season. Join the party and come watch the Cowboys of the PBR Pendleton Whiskey Velocity Tour ride the rankest bulls on the planet. The Bluff City Classic, February 18th at FedEx Forum. Tickets start at 15 bucks. Get yours at PBR.com or Ticketmaster.com. Get them while you can and find out what it means to be Cowboy. 
At Mountain Dew, we'd like to remind you that the world as we know it would not exist without the number zero. Which is why, at Mountain Dew, we'd like to recognize the number zero for making Mountain Dew Zero Sugar possible. Even with no sugar, it packs all of the bold citrus kick Dew Nation knows and loves. It's so good, you have no reason not to try it. As in zero. Get it? Crack open an ice-cold Mountain Dew Zero Sugar. It's zero sugar. All do. Welcome back to the Chris Vernon Show on GrindCityMedia.com and the Grind City Media YouTube page. Presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Now, back to your host, Chris Vernon. You think you know what's going on? Your love's on fire, but he's a liar. I think you just got played. Played like a backwoods fiddle. At an Alabama hoedown. He never told you a lick of truth. And now you've got the low down. All right, we're back. Chris Vernon, show. All right, I'm sorry, Brian Edwards from VegasInsider.com. Oh, man, we we are so far behind on everything we were going to do today. Uh, you might have heard the Super Bowls this weekend. Yeah. I did. And you famously, you've been on with us for so many years, you have famously called the first touchdown several different times on the show over the years. Usually at very good odds, some of which have been some random ass players. <laughs> Dude, why, why, why are you talking about Brandon LaFell like that? Brandon LaFell was one, and then who was the other one that you got? Anquan Bolden. <laughs> Anquan Bolden. Now, now, the Devin Hester, I think, was before I was coming on the air with you. That was 25 <laughs> to 1, the Bears Colts opening kickoff. But I got Odell last year. Oh, that's right. It was last year. Odell. Yeah. Yeah. You, all right. So you're always good for first touchdown. What do we got? Devontae Smith, thir- uh, 12 to 1 or 13 to 1. Um, look, if it's a short yardage situation, it'll probably be a running back, probably Miles Sanders, although it wouldn't surprise me if it's game well. But if it's Philadelphia and it's not a run in a short yardage situation, I think it's a toss up with A.J. Brown and Devontae, and I'll, I'll take Devontae. All right, I hate, With better the e- odds. I hate the Eagles, so give me a chief. <laughs> well, you know, I, di- I did Kadarius Tony at the last minute in the AFC Championship game at, uh, I think it was 13-1, to and he uh, he dropped that touchdown pass, which um, which sucked. Remember? Uh, he, yep, he, sure he had did. it in his hands. But um, uh, for the Chiefs, Oh, man. It's, you know, Kelsey just scores every touchdown for them, right? There's a lot of Pacheco props that I liked when I was looking at him. I love him. Pacheco. Yeah, no. Yeah, he didn't get as many touches against the Bengals, which was kind of surprising. And is it Clyde Edwards Hilaire going to play? Yeah, I they say like. he's going to be active, but I don't know. But maybe that helps P- Pacheco's odds. Um, but mm. if I had to stay with KC, I'd probably go Kelsey, although the odds won't be as fun. Yeah, they're going to suck. All right. Yeah. Uh, all right. What other props do we really like in this game? Uh, Kelsey's receiving yards. Oh. Um, yeah. Uh, it's in the 76 and a half to 79 and a half uh, range. So he only had 78 against the Bengals. But uh, against the Jags, he had 98 on 14 catches and 17 targets. Um, during the regular season, he had 81 or more in nine of 17 regular season games. So he's had 78 or more in 11 of 19 overall. Um, but I just think he's going to go to him early and often. And so I think he'll get more than his average, which is about at the 78. Yeah. I mean, in the, in the biggest game, you would figure they would right. try to be, t- I mean, he doesn't have any other targets. He loves right. And <laughs> I mean, we don't, you know what I mean? He doesn't have anybody else to throw to. And Hardman's out, and, you know, how long will Kadarius and Juju last? I think they're both going to, you know, try to play, and all things are pointing or everybody's saying they're tracking toward playing. So I think they're going to try, but, you know. How much? Kadarius normally has more than two weeks uh, with his injuries, I hate to admit. 
Well, the Giants would tell you the same. That's why you, they right. You, you could draft a guy that highly, and he could be gone that quickly. Uh, all right, Correct. Kelsey over seventy six and a half. You like Devonte Smith as the first touchdown. What else we got for props? Okay, I've got a like a real, real, real long shot that I'm obviously saying to do your very minimum bet, whatever your minimum amount is. But uh, Gardner Minshew to win MVP is anywhere from a, from 150 to 200 to one odds. So if Hurts were to get hurt in the first half and Philly win the game and he's effective, I mean, it could happen. Uh, I got to bet on a backup quarterback to win MVP. Your minimum, your smallest baby. So, so we're, so we're going to bet on Chad Henney too? I'm not against it. It's a it's only a hundred to one for him. It's one fifty <laughs> to two hundred for Gardner. Wait, that, that Chad and he's only a hundred to one. I mean, that, that's kind of really hedging the Mahomes could get hurt thing. Yeah. I, I I guess it's a thought process that he's more likely to get injured because of the ankle. Yeah, no. I don't know. He looked pretty good in the Bengals game. A ninety-eight yard drive, I would say so. <laughs> and he ran for the. Game breaking yeah. uh, first down at the end when it mattered most. That Mahomes performance was unbelievable. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about Henny's performance. No, I'm talking about Mahomes. Yeah. Mahomes looked okay. You know yes, what I mean? Yes, he did. But he Cincinnati did. Won. Uh, he did. But Henny looked good on that 98 yard scoring drive. He well. did. Uh, Devontae Smith, Travis Kelsey over receiving yards. You like the long shot? Anything else you're going to bet odds wise, or I mean uh, props wise? Yeah, Eagles team total over um, – I've seen it anywhere from 12.5 at, like, minus 125 to minus 130 or 13.5 at a small plus. Look, they've gotten to 14 by halftime in 16 of 19 games. And, hey, I, and they, oh, in the playoffs they got to 28 against the Giants by half and 21 against the Niners. I'm not against doing it for the Kansas City Chiefs as well. It's 12.5 for the Chiefs. Um, and I, I, I already did a little bit on the KC, but I, I got a good chunk on the Eagles. I like it, look, like it more so with the Eagles, but I like both. What kind of number can we get on? What's the, uh, what's the over for the first half? You know, I bet the overs in the first half on all those playoff games, and I raked on that. Like, they were constantly hitting. And there was the one I pushed, and that was because of a missed extra point. But In the Niners, yeah. Um, uh, uh, see, no, no, that ended up going over. There was some. There, there was one of them. Uh, it was, no, it was the uh, Cincinnati guy, wasn't it? I think it was yeah, him. McPherson, McPherson. I think he missed yeah. one. But anyways, I, the Ravens. Yes. Yeah. So I missed. A, I missed one of those because of a missed extra point, um, or I pushed on it, whatever. But generally, the twenty-four first, and a half. The first half and overs. Even money. Oh, okay. The first half overs have been amazing for the, these NFL playoffs, for sure. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not against it. I mean, 24 and a half, and, uh, you know, you get even money, so no juice. When you were saying you like both of those teams at 12 and a half, right? right? Okay. Right. All right. Okay. Oh, uh, so I'll go, yeah, all right. First half over for sure. All right. Any other props? No, nah, that's about it for me. I, I don't like to do too many. Are you betting on the game? Yeah. So I've already got a ton of money on the Chiefs. Are you on the Eagles? Yeah. I know. But I don't he, love it. I don't love it. These props are all eagle props. I ain't betting on their ass. <laughs> I hate them. Right? So I'm telling you, though, I, I am not going to be hesitant to come back with some of the Chiefs if the Eagles get out to an early lead. I think it could be a good game to, to bet live. Like, Okay. I think it's going to be a, a, a one-possession game. So if any team gets out to a 10 nothing, 14 nothing, or a 21-10 type of lead and it's still first half, I, I think you're probably going to be in good shape taking whoever's the underdog if you can get them like plus six ish or more certainly if you can get them plus seven and a half or more as long as there's still plenty of time left because i think it's going to be a very close game did you take one and a half i uh, actually got um one of my accounts had money line only minus 120 oh wow god 120 she's yeah all right so you got eagles but you might live yeah. bet on the other side you don't love right because it. it's, it's not a, no i don't love it um and I didn't even bet it till a couple of days ago when I saw the minus 120. And I still I have another account that's got Chiefs plus two at even money. I, I may buy it to three at minus 140 just for a little bit. 
Maybe. A, uh, hey, Rose, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to while out if this dude hits first touchdown again. <laughs> Who, Kelsey? You. I'm saying you. If oh. you hit this first touchdown thing again. Come on, I Devontae. Mean, Come on, Devontae. Devontae Smith. That's who you got this year. That's the one, huh? That's the one. I mean, you've hit it. You hit it last year. You've hit it at least three times with us over the years, and some of those have been some big odds, too. Uh, yeah, LaFell was 18-1. to one. LaFell was 18 to 1. Bolden was 12 to 1. But I think Beckham was only like 7 or 8 to 1. I was just telling somebody earlier today that the best the best Super Bowl one I ever hit was Von Miller MVP. That was the yeah, best. Yeah, what was that? Like 40, oh, 50? Oh, God. It was enormous. Enormous. I think, no, it was like 250. It was something crazy. I mean, oh, wow. defensive guys Jeez. never win. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And, and they were the underdog, mm-hmm. right? The Broncos were the underdog in that Super right. Bowl, which was bizarre. For them to right. be, uh, for them to be the underdog in that deal, but they just absolutely smashed them. The defense was so good, and Manning was terrible. It didn't even matter. Oh, he was horrible it that whole postseason. Ma- it didn't even matter, right? Hey, I tell you what, if, and I don't mean to dog him, but because he was, it is one of the all-time greats. But if you go back and look at Peyton Manning in the playoffs, his career, no bueno. Oh. Like, like compared to his normal, <laughs> compared to his normal standard, he wasn't. Better, I'm telling be- you, it was better than Danny Werfel's. Um, hey, I bet he's still Andy Werfel. <laughs> hey, who is the uh, who, who's doing the anthem this year? I Chris Stapleton. Yeah. Chris Stapleton. Yeah. I, there, just... I can't remember the last time it was a dude. Sweet American whiskey. <laughs> I Wait, hope he just does stuff like words? that. I can't remember. Hey, I can't remember the last time a dude sang the anthem at the Super Bowl. Let me do research. I got you. Seriously. I can't either. I don't know yeah, if a dude either. has ever sang the Super Bowl. Oh, it's happened. <laughs> Maybe like John Legend or something. <laughs> Who would sing it? I got you. Uh, Seriously. Go. Last one was uh, Mikey. Gu- oh, Mickey Guyton is a woman. That's a woman, yeah. Luke Bryan. Luke Bryan did it in 2017. Eric Church did it in 2021. Yeah. He did? And yeah. Jasmine Sullivan. Of yeah, the Super yeah. Bowl? I think Eric Church just played the guitar, though. I don't know if he sang. Yeah, dude, he didn't sing it. Yeah, well, Luke Bryan was 2017. Because I always bet on it. The over-under. You get a tip, uh, somebody hearing I mean, the... Um, no, no, I usually go do, like, the research. I'll find them, like, you know. You're right. And then before Luke Bryan, it was Billy Joel back in 27, 2007. Yeah, the last 10 years, last 15 years, only three guys have done it. And then in Ford Field in 2006, we had Aaron Neville with Aretha Franklin. I don't know <laughs> much. <laughs> but I love yeah. Dude, Aaron, hey, hey, let me tell you this. That was what always goes through my head, that, like, you know, the little Disney movie with the mouses. That, that was the song from it, <laughs> uh, wasn't it? Or no, no. What was the song what, from Ratatouille? that? Ratatouille? No, no. A, an American tale. It was like him and Linda. What's the Linda Ronstadt? Him and Linda Ronstadt. Yeah. Right. Don't know but there's much. a there's a song they had in that. Anyways, it's all I ever thought about when I thought about Aaron Neville, right? Yeah. Except for like when you would see like the oldies with the Neville brothers, and then like whatever it was. Four or five years ago, yeah. he came and did halftime yeah. of the Martin Luther King Day game. He was. Amazing. Yeah. And I was like, yo, Aaron Neville is unbelievable. Still got it. He sang like a change is gonna come by Sam Cook. I was like, this dude can go. Okay, okay. I don't know if he's on like the casino circuit or is he like is he still singing? Aaron Neville? That was and, and by the way, the one he did with Aretha Franklin, that was the second time he's done the national anthem at the Super Bowl. He did it in nineteen ninety in New Orleans. Bro, that's Aaron Neville, bro. Yeah, Absolutely. the only males who have men who have ever done it are Aaron Neville, uh, Billy Joel, Harry Connick Jr., Garth Brooks. I'm Luke Bryan. I'm the Luke Backstreet Bryan. Boys. Luke Bryan did it? Yeah, Luther bro. Vandross, the Backstreet Boys. The Backstreet Boys. Yeah, they did it in twenty uh, two thousand one. <laughs> You ain't even got me any Rihanna props, Brian. Yeah, we need a Rihanna props. I do not. I don't. Mm-hmm. That, Devin was supposed to be on those. We don't know. If, uh, when yeah, when, when will she play Umbrella? What outfit is usually... Rihanna going to wear? Yeah. Ah. First song, I like. I think I think she's going to do the one with Calvin Harris, the We Found Love. Oh, okay. In a whole has a, Roser has an opinion. <laughs> Bro, I'm uh, more excited for the Rihanna thing than I am the game. So is, I'm still salty. I Ma- feel like the 49ers should be there. Like, oh, I'm, God. I'm you, you and all your bitching team. Yeah. D 
Debo yeah, Samuel, I mean, Christian McCaffrey, they won't stop crying. Oh, we know. Why we, don't, we know we're better than the but Eagles. But why do they cry so much? They're Bro, just crying. lose. <laughs> just lose. God, not every, every day. Take your quarterback on the first possession, Yeah, Rosa. dude. Yeah, yeah how, about, how, about, how about your genius offensive mind doesn't guard their best pass rusher with a backup That's tight end? That's not what happened on that play if you actually Whatever. read about it. and Whatever. Read about it. Understand football. Read about it. I have a football brain. You hey, clearly hey, do not every, have a football hey, brain. Uh, hey, this is what I know. Every day when I pull up the internet, it's like another 49er crying yes. about losing to the That's Eagles. That's because if you watch the Eagles in that game, you know they didn't do anything special. It oh really God. came down to the quarterback thing. They averaged 3.8 yards per play. They didn't do Well, crap. they were stalling. Hey, hey, Jalen Hurts hey, sucks. Hey, 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 de- <laughs> hey, Devin, call him a wambulance. Call me one. That's fine. Wham. Go Chiefs. If you, never thought I'd be rooting for Patrick if, Mahomes. If you go cry, teams. what the baby going to do? The, uh, <laughs> wise man once said that. The By baby, the way, I, 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 I got a problem. This is dumb because the baby's going to cry no matter what. <laughs> Special guest what for Rihanna's do. performance. Jay-Z is minus 250. Drake minus 200. Calvin Harris minus 200. And DJ Khaled plus 200. Jay-Z and Drake should not come or out there. ASAP Rocky, who is her husband, baby daddy, one of the two. Plus 200. No, none that. of them should come out with it. Why? She should do it by herself. Oh, no. It's a proud moment for women everywhere. <laughs> Shut up. You don't care about women. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> It's a big moment. And there would be upstage. <laughs> why would Johnny Feminine? Yeah, why would Jay-Z come out there? Johnny Feminine! Jay-Z is a bigger is a bigger artist than it's just a male upstaging the female spotlight. Okay. And it's already a male's game being the Super Bowl. What are we doing here? Come on. And Chris Stapleton's already got the national anthem. I agree, Rose. Yeah. Johnny Feminist. Come on. He's turned a new leaf. Yeah, come on here. You love, the, is, du- you love the WBA what NBA is going notes, on here? Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay, hang on. Hang on. You don't love the WNBA? It's going too far. Uh, <laughs> too far. All right, you got anything else to bet on this weekend? Man, the Lions aren't out in college shoots right, yet. And they, so, nah. Yeah. Brian. Good luck. Thank you, brother. All right, fellas. All right, Enjoyed Brian, it. Thanks for Brian, having me. Brian Edwards, right, VegasInsider.com. Bro, what in the world? This dude. He's, he's, he's anti-Jay-Z coming out because he doesn't want the very proud women's moment to be upstaged <laughs> by Jay-Z. Yeah, girl power. <laughs> hey, let me she t- can bring the Spice Girls out with her. Hey, be okay. let, me, let me just go ahead. Can I, uh, I would like to bet the reverse of the Jay-Z thing. I, I would like to bet a billion to one, maybe a trillion to Bro, one. Jay-Z's coming out there. Why a trillion to one? Jay-Z is not going out there. If you think for one second Beyonce is going to let him go out That's there with true. Rihanna, you have lost your <laughs> mind. True. But didn't, didn't Jay-Z like produce the halftime show? It doesn't matter, bro. They got real smoke. The beehive and the, uh, what do they call them? Uh, the, I, I don't know. What is Riri's army called? They've got the, the, the Rihanna Navy. The Navy. The Navy. Riri. They put the little boats. Oh, yeah. They put it's the, the boats boat. versus the bees. <laughs> So you don't think Jay Z's gonna be out there? Hell no! I think ASAP Rocky might show up. I think he might show up. Just Drake show up. would. Yeah. I mean, any, hey, that's good for women. <laughs> Roser, that wouldn't be offensive, <laughs> right? Dude. Drake doesn't really upset. I don't need. I don't need Drake coming out there getting the mic and going. You need to get work done, done, <laughs> done, done. <laughs> he's a, I'm like, oh, oh my god, shut up. up. Yeah, but he's a, hey, that's hey, Drake. Hey. Yeah, but he's a. Ooh. He yeah, but, but, he, but he's, he's a feminine enough that it'd still be a girl. Yeah, yeah, like, get your fam- singing ass out of here. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Damn, dude. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, God. The beast came out. <laughs> no. Toxic no. Man. Toxic Man. Man. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Johnny Dev Toxic. heard it. Johnny Toxic. No, 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 no. He's you, back. You want to hear the toxic masculinity. Dev heard it before the show. Oh, no. Billboard? And Vibe released their top 50 rappers of all oh, time. No. Oh, Bro, Nicki Minaj being number 10 ahead of Kanye West, Andre 3000, Rakim, Ice Cube is just but one Roser, of the most but what about, absurd but, things but ever. what about women getting a place on the top yeah, 10 Yeah, representation. List? Representation matters, bro. Yeah, but representation they're not, matters. But, but they're not one of the top 10 rappers of all time. So does Honesty. And be honest with yourself, Billboard and Vibe. You know Nicki Minaj <laughs> is not one of the ten best rappers of all time. <laughs> Having someone like Mos- Put up in a monster out of a hair. 
<laughs> having someone Sri like Lanka. having someone like most deaf be in like the 30s or 40s and having Nicki Minaj be 10 is just first things first I eat, I your, eat your brains, brains. yeah join through your drink impression again people said they want to hear you it again. need to get work done 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 Ooh, I don't even know what you're singing, bro. <laughs> where, 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 where. <laughs> That's a Rihanna and Drake song. That's what he'll do. He'll come out there and, play and sing that song. You gonna prance around? The last thing I need is Drake grabbing the damn microphone going, You need to <laughs> do like, Shut your ass up. How you hate Drake so much, man? He I don't take, hate Drake. You take your girl, man? He's just corny. He is corny. I ain't gonna lie. He's By the way, he was ranked number eight on that list. Hard cap. Drake, bro, his bars are. Cr Come on now. At least you no, can respect, Drake, Drake, if you, you want to respect put, rapper Drake. If you want to put Drake top 10, that's fine. He's not better than Kanye. He's not better than Andre 3000. He's not better than Ice Cube. And he's not better than Rakim. What's, name your favorite Rakim song. Rakim, when I be on the mic. Name your favorite Rakim song. When I be on the mic. Hardcore. Name your favorite Rakim song. <laughs> I just said, when I be on the mic. It's a song, Dev. I never heard this. You heard it. <laughs> yeah. Respect your elders. <laughs> Respect your elders, youngin. <laughs> All right, it's gonna do oh, it for wow, today's so, show. Man. Go Chiefs. Go Chiefs. We'll be back. Yeah, I gotta go to Boston this weekend. You're going? Yeah, I forgot about that. Bean Town. I totally forgot. About Stand that. up. Yeah. So we're bring us back some chowder. And we're staying. We're staying there uh, to watch Super Bowl. Oh, you are. So you're gonna watch it in Boston. Yeah. Fair enough, we get a fair win enough. with Luke Kennard, and then we go watch. If it's snowing, you can go check out Fen what is it, Fenway Park. Yeah. I cannot do the well, Boston. I can't, I can't walk around Boston. Myself, <laughs> it's Superman. All right, it's gonna do it for the show. Thanks to John Krasinski. Thanks to Gary Parrish. Thanks to Brian Edwards. Thanks to Devin Walker. Thanks to John Roser across the glass. So Robbie and Jacob back in the studio until Monday. Everybody have a wonderful and safe weekend. Until then, we go.